Any questions, even if it's not related to Leo, feel free to ask. Second related question. I don't want it to overpower my voice. All right. <clears throat> the wall of stage. My frame rate still hasn't been fixed, regardless of how many patches. The frame rate is still inconsistent. I don't know what the fuck they did with this game on the PC, but whatever. All right, so Leo. Movement seems good. One thing I always love about Leo is the stance. The stance, like, with the arm all the way out like that, that makes me think that you can clip that arm. You know? Because the uh, arm is probably a hurt box. You can see right here, yeah. Punching the fist right there. It's still part of the hurt box. But you see I'm a little bit off axis, and it whips. Let me get a little more off axis. I made it with one time, so maybe it's not like super consistent, but still, I still feel like just that stance makes the arms stick out, you know, quite a bit. And, uh, the legs, uh, whoop. My setting's a little weird from last time I was doing this, I guess. I'm gonna change this. Stand. The leg isn't really out that much. It's pretty standard there. Uh, back that still seems good. Side step seems fine. Movement overall seems standard, you know, I don't know if uh, Leo's back dash is better than anybody else's, but uh, it seems about average to me, just off the top of my head. As far as what I know about Leo, a lot of, like, power, strong hitting moves that are safe on block that seem like they shouldn't be. Now, I wish I remembered the inputs of some of the examples now, but you'll see them as I go through the move list here. That's one thing I always found as a pain in the ass about fighting Leo. Of course, also, the back one force shit. Everybody knows about that. If you don't know about that, you're gonna learn. You're gonna learn how to beat it, and you're gonna learn how to use it after I go through all that stuff. Uh, but yeah, starting from the top with the jabs. Like always, jab, 10 frame startup, plus, uh, what do you call it? Plus uh, one on block, plus eight on hit. You already know, universal offensive starter for all characters in Tekken. Unless you're, well, let me not say that. I was gonna say unless you're Asuka, because hers is negative three, but she has a bunch of built-in options for the jabs. So the same thing for her. Uh, unless you're Jack, then that then thing's a little different, right? Next we got a uh, good old 1-2, same as always. I got a 1 on block, plus 7 on hit. Your standard 10 frame jab punisher. If your character has no other option or for whatever reason you're not ready for a better option like that, probably. Uh, 1-2. So Leo apparently has 1-2 back, which goes into K and K. I didn't know about that. And it looks like it creates some space, so that's interesting. Uh, according to RB, no way the frame data on this on block is negative 10, so you don't want to do this on block unless you're doing a lot of jab pressure and stopping from pressing buttons because you got that, uh, which we'll get to next. But still, if you feel like you got people scared after jabs, you can try to work that in there, but you're taking a big risk. Also, RB Norway says this is negative 10, but I wonder if that how true that really is. Like, if I go into that back fist, what interrupts? So we're going to find that out right now. <clears throat> Alright. So, jab. 13. 15. Okay, definitely it's bad. Yeah, I don't know how fast that is. What was that? 17 frames, according to the bot. So, on hit, though. Same thing on hit. So, this isn't very good. 15 frame exchange on hit. With the back fist, which is the that back fist is the fastest option out of that. Uh, what happens if he uh, does? Uh, let me go to the low. So I was my jab then. Can't even crush the jab. So this is a shitty transition. Maybe it's for certain juggles, but I wouldn't recommend using it in a neutral situation. Either way goes. That's one suit back. Counter here, the same thing. It says negative two here. I don't know. He's worse than that. She can't even duck. Anyway, next we got the other jab spring extension. So one, two, one, and one, two, four. One, two, four is one you've probably seen a lot if, you, if you've never played uh, as Leo, but you played against Leo. 
probably see this a lot of this getting snuck in there a lot. Does that low have any counter hit properties? It don't. Uh, plus three on hits, regardless on if it's counter hit or not. So this is one of those things where you have an extension that makes the one two stronger, right? It's one of the extensions, one of the two extensions. The other one is one two one, right? And one two one is a high, so there is no mid low mix up. But the whole point is you do a lot of one twos. For example, if you saw Aris streaming the uh, top eight yesterday, he's gonna throw it down. You saw, you heard him mention a lot of times Paul doing that string. Paul has a string that's supposed to go back three. It's a low kick. Then two, he does like a mid punch. And then he has either a high or a low extension out of it. So there's no mix up. But Anakin was doing the low with a delay. And the low on delay on counter hit, <coughs> if you call it the low on counter, he got a free follow up. So th that's how you got to think about strings like this. There's some sort of extension on your strings. And uh, as long as uh, the last hit of the extension, sorry, the second to last hit of the extension isn't too bad on block, you could actually run the strings that way. So when you see an extension like this, you could just mix it up. You know? You mix it up. And it just makes people hesitate when they block something like this, which is negative two. Was it negative two? Negative one? Negative one, sorry. One two is negative one. But then you don't have to, you know, you have an extra, like, mental lag frame advantage, right? Because they're gonna be afraid of getting hit by the extensions. And that's why you wanna, you know, know this kind of thing. And Leo has a lot of options off of the one two, so that's good, that's good. And let's see, uh, let's look forward. So that's one, that's one two, one two. Okay, it doesn't jail. And I know that that's uh, negative, what's it, negative 13? Yeah, there you go, negative 13. I don't know why that uh, was 14 for this, but yeah, negative 13. And also, you could duck the third hit. But you have to be sharp to interrupt that last hit. You have to be like, it's like almost unlikely. So yeah, you have to instant, it's like you have to do an instant while standing. Oh my god, that was too slow. I exchange. That's 11 frames. There you go. You could, uh, I could, you could, you could get a cross jab. No, you can't. You can't cross jab in time. You have to manually duck. And side step. And let's see. If the third hit connects, the fourth hit is guaranteed for 37 damage, it's pretty good. So like I said, yeah, you set people up with the one twos, one twos often, and then all of a sudden you do that, and they try to press something or move or whatever, you're gonna get 37 damage plus pushback. It's pretty good, if you ask me. Uh, but you're risking negative 13 block punish, so keep that in mind. By the way, please let me know if at any point my voice, uh, or the music is overpowering my voice, because I like to have a soundtrack in the background while I do these. I don't like the pure silence, but I had trouble mixing the audio because OBS is shitty with that, showing me the audio levels. Anyway, so then the other extension, if you want to, if you want to avoid negative thirteen, this is of course one two one four. Which is another thing you've probably seen before. Uh, which what is kind of loud, the music or my voice? I lower the music. The music? Okay. How about that? Is that better? Well, the, the song is ending, actually, so it's going to lower anyway, but whatever. If that's better, let me know. Thanks for the heads up, Milo. Because like, there have been a couple of times where I've been doing this for like half an hour, and then all of a sudden somebody comes in and is like, it's kind of loud, man. It's like nobody told me anything the whole time, so I was like, what are these, like, you know, 10, 15 people watching? Nobody mentioned them. <laughs> I lower it a little more just in case. All right. So anyway, guys, one, two, one, four. Let's see. <clears throat> Alright, thanks for the heads up. Man. Same thing here. If the third hit hits you, the fourth hit combos, and 46 damage with knockback also. That's really good damage. But then this is the riskier one because you risk duck. Like in this case, if I duck the third hit and you miss that, that's like an easy launch. Easy. You don't have a... You don't have a really hot kick. I have trouble doing that shit. There it is. You get a delayed hockey if you want big damage off of that shit. 
So that's the risk. Of course, on block, it's negative six with pushback. So if you're against Leo, you best learn to duck that shit. And honestly, ducking that shit isn't, this isn't the riskiest thing in the world, right? If he's noticed the third hit comes out, right? If you notice the third hit comes out and you don't duck the third hit and you want to guess high on the fourth hit, what you're really risking is just 25, wait, 21 damage, right side. 21 damage, this, which is like, it hurts, but it's not like the worst thing in the world, you know? And your reward for guessing right is a launch for like, what, 65, 60, 65, whatever fuck you, your character does, right? That's good damage. So it's a good, uh, it's a good, you know, risk reward for your, you know, risk reward on, uh, on your end. That's also, if you're the Leo player, that's also why I wouldn't recommend you relying on this kind of stuff. It's good, it, remember, remember what, what I said earlier, it enhances your jab, your jab speed, your jab, your one, your one, two, this kind of stuff enhances it. Don't rely on it only. You don't want to rely on this kind of stuff too much, right? I just fought like a dude um, that I met on another Discord, and he was using Miguel, and he was doing the Miguel down for one, one, down for, he never did a down for one by itself, basically, because Miguel has all these fucking extensions of the down for one, and I was trying to tell him, dude, all right, that stuff can work, but you're just flipping a coin. Am I going mid or am I going low? Am I going mid or am I going high, you, you know? Yeah, like, you need to expand your options a lot more. So you don't want to just rely on, like, just throwing that kind of shit out all day. Unless you want to just abuse your opponent for lack of knowledge. But, you know, don't don't learn to rely on that to get your wins. Just know that it strengthens everything else, right? Oops. I'm testing which one of these is guaranteed in the back, because I always forget. I think this one is not. Okay, that one is guaranteed in the back. So 1 2 1 4 is guaranteed on a back turn opponent for 63 damage. It starts as a jab string. What that means is, for example, if you punish Ling Zayu's uh, California roll into the hands, the, the, hand, the root kick, the fucking kick launcher, this is guaranteed on her. Because that's negative 11, so she cannot parry it or counter it. So, and obviously you cannot duck it as I just showed there. So, that's good. That's good that Leo has that. Anytime you get on a back turn opponent, that is 100% guaranteed. Even though, like, usually you could duck highs and strings from back turn, that one you cannot. There's not enough of a gap be in between each hit, basically. As long as you don't delay it. Oops. As long as you don't delay it, assuming it is delayable. Wow, the third hit is actually delayable. Not the fourth hit, though. Which is which further enhances uh, catching people after a one-two. I always wonder why I don't see Leo players uh, delay this. Is it one-one? Okay. So that delay will catch people, especially if you're doing this into this or this into like a low of some sort, right? Or that. Oh, you could delay the low too. Ooh, you could delay the low. Ooh. But then the low is gonna make people duck, so you're gonna. So as long as you put the delays, you can work in like a down forward one poke. So that's that's good. Those are good extensions. Uh, what's the one two four on oh, one block? Let's see. Uh, it's only negative thirteen. I mean, some characters will launch that, so be mindful if you're fighting Kazuya or Josie. Maybe do a little less of that. <laughs> yeah. But if you're fighting, let's say, Gigas, I'd do this a lot more. Gigas only gonna get a wild standing one out of it, which is, uh, you know, whatever, right? Or a Huarang, actually, no, Huarang's wild standing 4 4 does kinda hurt. But he won't get anything too crazy off of it. Hey, Hachi, I don't think it's uh, wild standing 4 4. Yeah, whatever. Basically, use it less against characters that'll launch you for it, like uh, Eddie, Kazuya, Josie, uh, ooh, whoever the fuck else has a 13 frame wild standing launcher. Uh, maybe Akuma and Eliza with meter. Yeah, those kinds of characters. Anyway, and then she has one, two, four. Okay, that's the one I went through already. One, two, four. That's plus three on hit. No special properties on counter. All right, so you cannot sidestep any of that shit if I'm not mistaken. I did the uh, one, two, one earlier. Yeah, that's not. Um, at least not with Leo. I can't. Can't back that shot. All right. So you gotta buy into it when you block it. Next, we got 1-4. I think this is Leo's actual 10 frame punish. 24 damage, pretty solid. Seems to knock uh, your opponent a little bit to off axis to the left. Doesn't really mean much, but... 
just something to keep in mind, I guess, when it comes to positioning and altering positioning. Like, let's say, near a wall or something, you know? Um, 24 damage plus 5. Long shot counter hit? Ooh. If you whiff the first hit, that 4 is a counter hit launcher. It's like a magic 4, basically. I don't know if Leo can convert, though. I don't know how Leo would convert that, but that's there. Um, does it jail? It does, which means you can't mash. That would because that would be beast. That would make the jab so much stronger. The jab is already a strong option to start offense, right? But then if you were able to catch him with that, <laughs> if they were mashing after your jab, that would be pretty fucked up. But uh, it jails, so they're forced to block. Uh, Shit on block. Negative four, so it's not even bad on block either. I guess this is one of those things if you're if you're gonna fish for a jab from like this range and you want to cover your ass, you might as well throw out the four. But keep in mind that if they were to duck, the four will make you will only make you recover that much slower. So you do open yourself up to that against a really sharp opponent, right? But in general, like that makes in my opinion this a decent string to throw out from this range. Because if they dash in at the wrong time, they'll get hit by 1-4, and then you get your plus 5, and you do whatever. If they don't dash in, whatever, and they try to, uh, but they see the, this whiff, and they try to swing, bam, you get a counter hit. And then you do, you know, you do whatever the fuck the follow-up is. Unfortunately, I don't know what it would be. If there's a Leo player in the chat, feel free to chime in. I don't know how to follow that, especially from this range. There's got to be at least something Not guaranteed. Put that down. Okay, down 14. Yeah, that's not that's not guaranteed. I'm sure there's something. We'll get back to that. Either way it goes, 1-4, 10 frame punisher. You can hold forward to add range if you have to. Next we got two. Like most twos. Oh, it's it's animated a little differently than most standing twos. It's a weird looking punch. But uh this is uh, uh what is this? 10 frame, 11 frame startup for Leo. So it's not a standard two. Negative one on block plus five on hit, and it's the start of strings. So two one is 11 frame. Is that natural combo? Okay, that is. And two two. That looks like an actual 11 frame punisher. You're gonna 29 damage, more damage, uh, five more damage than one than the 10 frame punisher. Uh, what is this? It is high, and this is plus four. So you get one frame matches less, but you get a little uh, five more damage. That's good to know. According to RB Norway, 2-2 two, two is negative 13 on block, so it's strictly a block punisher, or maybe a whip punisher if you want a little extra damage. I don't know. I wouldn't use it as a whip punisher. But <laughs> I would use it strictly as a block punisher. It's a unique block punisher. Uh, no counter hit properties. Damn, that second hit by itself does a grip. Can't delay it. So two one. If it looks like the start of a ten hit, of course, because it is. I thought so. Whatever. It's showing two one by itself because it's a solid string, I guess. Because it's plus four on hit and two one is negative. It's not solid at all. It just sucks. I don't know why we know he's even bothering. But whatever. You have this. It's plus four also. Less damage than uh, two two. And uh, two two is actually higher mid. I didn't think about that. Uh, and this is the start of the. 10 hit, whatever it is. Yeah. If you do 2 1 3. Negative 7 on block, so yeah, fuck that shit. I don't think the 2 has any unique tracking, right? Ah, and a plus 1 situation, you'll catch people, but. It, considering that I would recommend using it only as a. Block punish, this is kind of pointless. I would use something else for tracking. Alright, next. Standing 3. Uh, standing 3, too. This is something I've seen in old combos. I don't know if this is an actual good string, though. Natural combo. Standing 3 is 14 frames. So I don't know if this is a good. I don't think it is. That is, that is a counter hit. This is 3 2 3. Nope. Oh, second, I guess. 
points. Uh, 3-2 is plus 9. Actually, that's pretty good. And it's only negative 2 on block. I'm going to guess it doesn't jail. Still, like, if you need, like, a uh, whip punch from this range, plus 9 is pretty good. It is 14, though, so if you're going to whip punch from this range, you might as well be looking for that, I guess. And I'm going to guess this doesn't jail, so this could be risky. Yeah, it doesn't jail. So let's see if uh, Leo finishes the string. What kind of window do you really have? All right, so that's actually safe on block. This whole string is negative seven. Pretty good. Ooh, and it covers you pretty well. Look at that. It exchanged the boss any two launcher. Hey, you have to be like instant with a 15 frame launcher. Otherwise, you'll eat that last kick for 31 damage counter hit. I don't know if that hop means that it's gonna cover. It's gonna cover um, lows. I don't think so. But anyway, pretty good string. Let's see how the track is. Plus one situation. Oh. It's inconsistent, looks like. So I got a feeling like if you were if you were to put yourself at plus two, or uh, how about plus four? Oh, the pushback fucks it up. Yeah, the pushback kind of fucks it up. Uh, yeah. All right. So never mind that. A little wonky, I guess, but no real tracking on that. That range is pretty good. I mean, it could just be clipping Leo's arm, so it's hard to tell, really. <laughs> like that first kick I landed was nowhere near Leo's head, right? Oh, whatever. Anyway, uh, three, two down goes into whatever that stance is, right? What is it? Bach, B O K, which has a bunch of options. I'll get to later. And the Bach transition is plus five on hit, negative six on block. Let's see, what, what kind of frame does the Bach move at? 19, 13, 20, 21. Armor, I didn't know Bach had armor. Okay, so that's the one, right? Bach 1-2, that's the fast one. That's the one to stop you from mashing. Put that up. Okay, so definitely not on block. I can't even start my jab animation. So yeah, on hit, this is a legit frame trap. All right. <clears throat> Exchange with 15 frames. Let me make sure I executed that. Without wasting. Yep, exchange with 15 frames on the knee. Uh, that's 19 frames, so. And the knee is what, 20? The knee is 20. So the Bach high, was it mid, high or mid? That's mid, right? The Bach mid launcher will exchange with 14 frames. That's a slow armor move. With that's a high. So that's risky. Because people could hit you to the armor and then duck, depending on how fast they recover off of their move. So you're gonna be real careful with that shit. So it's really the Bach one that's gonna stop people from mashing, and then you can like try to mix them up. Is there a Bach low? Mm, 
supposed to come out seamlessly. Let's see, where's Bach? Uh, that this is uh, K and K, right? Where's Bach? This is Bach. Fobu. <laughs> Fobu, okay. I don't know how to pronounce any of this shit, sorry. That's the, the armor? Yeah, that's the arm move, that's the homie move. Yeah, there's no Bach low. That's unfortunate. Man, I've been afraid of Bach this whole time, but it seems like Bach is designed to be like an evasive move where you make something with and then you punish. That's it. It doesn't seem like something that you, uh get too aggressive and actually mix someone up with too much. There is there is like a pseudo mix up in there. Cause you do the Bach high for frame advantage, right? That shit. For frame advantage. Which is a normal hit jungle start, I didn't even know. Is that a buff? I don't think that was that guy before. You do that shit for fucking plus nine shit. The homie move. So it's like, oh so you you know you wanna get people afraid, you throw in some of that and you keep pressure. And that might make them start to mash during Bach, right? And then that's when you fuck them up with the other stuff. Yeah, I know. I noticed you could full crouch out of it. I did that before. It, but it's not seamless, is what I'm saying. That's what makes me, like, respect it less as a mix-up. See? There's a delay there. I mean, you can. I mean, I'm sure if you get people afraid enough of the stance and there's some ignorance in the matchup, you could definitely get away with just going into Bach and then, you know, boom, right? Off of a transition. But it's not something that I would rely on as, like, a solid mix-up. You know what I'm saying? It's just something to like enhance your options out of Bach a bit when you get him afraid. Cause like I said, you hit him with this and you throw this out a couple of times, right? Maybe not the follow up, cause unless it's hit confirmable. Is that hit confirmable? Nope, definitely not hit confirmable. You have to commit. And that's like what, negative 14 on block was it? You see the bot, negative 14. So that's a risky fucking move right there against most of the cast. Um, by the way it goes, you throw this a couple of times out of your transitions where they cannot interrupt it, then you get them afraid and that's when you start throwing in, you know, you throw in the cancel and then you turn it to a full crouch mix up instead of Bach, right? You turn it to a full crouch, you can go to hot kick from crouch, go while standing too to launch them from crouch. So yeah, that's pretty much how, that's, how that works. So it's good, but it's not like, oh my god, I gotta run this fucking mix up unless your opponent, unless you're like in like a set or a tournament match or whatever and you're like I, I want to fuck this opponent up if you're in it to win it and you notice your opponent is ignorant to that kind of shit fucking push their shit in but if you're just playing to learn in general I wouldn't recommend relying too much on it I would recommend mixing it up really feeling out your mix ups you know, so you have, you're not a one trick pony is what I'm saying you don't want to like carry yourself to higher ranks or whatever you're doing whether it's online rank or playing against people locally you don't want to carry yourself relying on those kinds of strings because the moment you fight somebody that knows how to beat that string you don't know how to do everything else and you get fucked you got to know how to do everything build it all up either way it goes nice options in general it's just there's no built-in low out of box all right so that's three of it this is a pretty good thing so that's three two three i think that's a pretty okay string um it's pretty risky though like depending on your opponent but still it's not the most riskiest shit in the world. Uh, just know that it's there. And apparently here, you can cancel that. If you uh, if you put input three two three and hold back, you cancel it to neutral. If you want to get like cute with it, I guess. But that seems pretty gimmicky to me. So it's like whatever. And then three two four. Ah, to go to K and K. I think this is a juggle thing. All right. I'm assuming it's like the other, what is it? Four, four. So three, two, four. So anytime you see that knee transition in K and K, know that it's plus on block. The bot does not know this, obviously. It's plus in the in the sense that if you go right into a move, a K and K move, you treat it as plus on block, specifically plus eight. So this will interrupt, that will exchange for the jab, assuming that this frame data is correct on this bot, right? For the actual move. That's why I do that. 
So it says that's 18, right? So that should exchange for jab. Wow, they beat out my jab. So that's probably plus nine. It says plus eight here. Did I see that right? Yeah, it's probably actually plus nine in this situation. Is it pretty safe to duck after King K. Leo only has like a hot kick mid option after, right? Well, 10 man, um, the actual way to beat K and K, the V K and K transition is side step left, which is not universal. It is not universal, but if you have, let's say a backswing blow style move or something that low profiles even just a little bit, like, uh, I don't know how long this takes for Leo. Nope. Does Leo have a backspin blow? Anybody know? Anybody know if Leo has a backspin blow? Damn. This stuff that creates space. I don't know if Leo's just size stuff. That's a free launch if you size them. Down back three. Ah, uh, yeah, so that probably works, right? It sure do. It is a high, though. The... No, that's not what I wanted to do. See? That's a high. So, because of that, I would just sidestep. You don't even need a big sidestep. See? I just sidestep. I inputted it almost like a tilde, up tilde, down forward two. And I beat out the knee. Oh. No matter what Leo does, the fastest option is the backhand. Right? So, first of all, we just verified that Leo can't duck cancel and block in time to for the down forward two, right? Nope. Can't do shit. So if the only thing about this, that's a commitment. So what it, what it will lose to is... Right? That's the risk reward. You can fuss and guard the K and K low mid. Let's see something. Let me see something. That's 20. Uh, the mid is the hot kick, right? That's 20. No, they both hit on the same frame. If you're fuzzy guarding it, it's because the opponent is delaying it. If the opponent delays it, then you can fuzzy, but they're hitting on the same frame, so it's not you can't fuzzy it properly. Depends on the, on the opponent. You can sidestep one of them, I think. At best, you might be able to react to her hopping like that, right? But... Yeah, it work. Um, there you go. So, here's the problem. There's no OS here, really. Because the second kick tracks. If the second kick didn't track, there would be an OS here to beat out both the mid and the high. Sorry, the mid and the low. Unfortunately, you have to commit to, to you have to keep committing for both kicks to whip, which means the low is gonna clip you and, and before you can cancel it. You know, if the what I would have said is if the second kick didn't track, it would just be bomb into a duck, right? Or bam into a low pair. That's all it would be, side step into a low pair. But that ain't happening. Uh, also, if you sidestep, the uh, this stops sidestep, but on regular hit, it's nothing. On regular hit, it, I mean, it's not nothing. How much damage is it? 18 damage. It's an 18 damage high that spins and will wall splash you. So it's not nothing, but it's not, you know, it's not what would happen on counter hit, which... Oops. Uh, juggle. Back one juggles also on counter, obviously. Alright. So I just kinda 
went through the stances there a little bit, but I'll go more in depth later when I actually get to them in the movements. So, three, two, four. I mean, that's there if you want to force K, uh, what you call it, K and K. The knee up is, knee up is K and K. The AOP shit is Bach. Okay, I gotta try to remember that. K for knee, that's how I remember it. K is for knee, and that's how I remember it. K and K, right? Knee. <laughs> when I see, look at that knee. Um, thanks for the follow, whoever that was. I didn't see your name. <laughs> the second boss blocking me. Thanks for the follow, everybody. Remember Brun. Appreciate it. Uh... So, back in business, right? Next is we got a four, 12 frames, and it is a magic four. As far as how to convert off of it, looks like you can dash jab if you're close. But if you're far, I already know it's not gonna work. You have to be fucking god mode probably. So, what I don't know here is maybe if a Leo player in the chat can help me, what would Leo do for a consistent magic four uh, juggle? Even if it's not a full juggle, even if it's just like one follow up. Anybody know? Down two? Down two. You sure it's down two? Forward two, down one. Hey, squirrel, what's up? Forward, forward two, down one? What? What's forward two, down one? Or are you saying forward two or down one? It's a spike, it's, but not a full juggle, right? Okay, so that would be the consistent, like, and it would floor break if you're on that one stage. But uh, if you're up close, you could dash that. Brian style. I got it the first time, and now I can't do it. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. This is like Marduk. Marduk had a fucking annoying... Like, it was basically... Don't even do it, just go into a, uh... Maybe it's an Axis thing. Yeah, it looks like it might be an Axis thing to get consistency out of it. Whatever. Alright, so forward two, down one, which will give you some sort of okay trophy, I imagine, right? Go down through it. Uh, 39, so it's only one more damage to actually finish the string. That's not guaranteed. my music who told you to stop oh because it's the end all right let me go back to the yakuza sorry about that all right is that number one yes it is okay so uh let's see what kind of okie we can get out of this i'm sure aris already tested it but now i'm gonna test it so this 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 stuff won't apply because of the spike so we gotta look at this Let's see what you do versus wake up kick first. I should just turn on counter hit. Let me turn on counter hit. Where you at counter hit? Counter hit, counter hit. Okay, so the low interrupts. The low is 16 frames. What's uh, a mid option that ground pounds? That ground pounds, you hear me? That hits grounded. Anybody know?
Anybody know anything? If you don't, I'll get back to this. There's that cup. There it is. And if that hits like that, if that hits like that, something is guaranteed. Um, what's the ground punch? What's the low punch? Not that one, the um, down forward two, that's, there it is. What a weird input, thank you. It's guaranteed, right? Yeah, that's guaranteed. So you gotta look for, if you see, this is up forward three plus four. If you have any character that has a grounded hitting move that causes that animation, they'll probably have a guaranteed follow-up. For example, Gigas is back four. He does like a stop. And uh, it causes that bounce to happen. There's others I don't know, but look for that. It's a, it's a new, to, new to Tekken 7, this thing. All right, so. I know I'm on counter hit time, man. I, I said it on purpose. So the reason I'm looking for that is because I'm trying to look for the Oki off of uh, Magic 4. All right. Oops. Um, so what ends up happening is... Um, that's a counter hit juggle starter, isn't it? What will be the pickup? Okay, at the very least, you get a down 3-2. What's the uh, pickup? Now I'm back one. Oh, that's a shitty pickup, but still, it's nice to get a juggle out of that. That's good Oki right there. This is a great Oki tool in general now, up four, three plus four. But now off of this setup, right? You're gonna beat out the low wake up kick. It's not gonna be on counter hit though, is it? Um, I should turn. No, I only have the first hit on counter hit. Let me just turn off to be sure. Because that's not gonna counter hit in that situation. So they'll do that, right? Which is fine, because it's gonna for it's gonna be 26 damage. It's gonna force crouch at plus six. So that's good. That's still good. And they stay down, right? I already showed it earlier, but might as well do it after the combo. That's guaranteed. If they stay down, if they try to side roll. Let's see if they try to side roll. Side roll will make it lose either way, right? So then it ends up being does the other option below cover you. Oh, she, she becomes Cosmo. Below does keep you uh, covered. I would just do down for us to risk. Stomp was, um... Okay, so the stomp. The manual stomp doesn't keep you covered. So I would just mix up down four with up forward three plus four. Can you up forward one off for the magic four? No, I tried that before. The only thing I was able to do was that... One of the, see? There it is. I got it again. One of those really hard dash jabs, like Brian. Magic four is like that. Marduk's was like that, you know, it's a couple of them that are like that. But yeah, don't, I wouldn't rely on it. Especially since you've seen it has such like solid OP off of that. And if, you, like I said earlier, if there was a ground break, I'm guessing that would break the ground. It might not, but I'm guessing it would. Even if it doesn't, you still get good OP, so you're covered. Maddie? <laughs> What's up, Lancelot? I haven't called Maddie before. 
Uh, tan men? Yeah. Oh, I already answered your question, I think. Yeah, it affects grounded heads. We were talking about that up four people before. Like if they stay down grounded, bah! See? They get the bounce. As long as you see that bounce, huh, you get that guarantee. As a matter of fact, isn't that Leo's wall combo? One of the best wall combos that Leo could do now? Which is weird, right? When you think about it. But you gotta make you gotta make sure up four three four is a low wall hit, I think. This song kind of grew on me as I was playing through Yakuza Kiwami. At first I didn't like it, but now I kind of like it. Even with the, the beat drop. Anyway, uh, so yeah, forward two, down one. <laughs> it does break the floor, good. Uh, let's see what the tracking is, how the track is on the Magic 4. I'm gonna guess it'll probably cover the right side a little bit, right? Not quite. Yep, got nothing. Alright, so be it. So no tracking on the magic form. Still, 12 frames. You know how it do. Um, negative 7 on block. So don't sidestep if it gets blocked up close. Next on the list is one plus two. Armor move. Here we are. Good damage. Negative 12 on block. Oops. Wall splats. Nothing special on counter. Just five more damage. You pick up with two. Back one four off of uh, magic four. That looks hard to do. This forward two is a move. I would just do the jab, honestly. Unless you want to get greedy, right? Alright. Oh! Oops. Oh, okay. And then it would be the... K and K2, right? Ah, you can't really mash because of the strings. You have to, like, time it. Your inputs with Leo. <laughs> right, and then you do whatever. 55 damage on the, off of the tailspin. That's good damage. Really quite good. Um, Alright, well, anyway. Magic 4. So, 1 plus 2. There's not much to say about 1 plus 2. It's a power crash. I dotted trash because it's fucking slow. 25 frames. Yeah, see? No tracking on that shit. Alright. Uh, 2 plus 3. Ah. This is a Sabaki. With a counter hit. I'm sure if she uh, successfully parries... She'll uh, get something out of that. Absorbs one hit, mid or high. Which is to say, it'll, they'll parry the one. Unlike Fangs, which parries multiple hits from fucking Parting Clouds when he's doing the Wing Chun shit, right? This is only going to parry one hit, and then we will do the follow up. It's uh, safe on block, too. That's nice. Uh, off a successful parry and knocks down. If it just hits like that, it does that for plus five. pretty good. It's the last boss music of Kiwami. Ah, oh, that startup sucks. It has... How do I put it only has, it seems to only have a few frames of startup. But it does seem to start up fast. That's why, like, if I mash it off of my block recovery here, it's not working. But if I delay it, 
it works. So it's a, you know, there's a short window to use this. Uh, unfortunately, RB Norway doesn't say. Oh, how can I slice this? Down forward too. How about if I have the uh, one four and then one? Let the one four hit me. Check that out. Oh, she's able to block it? Oh, because the parry whiffed. No, it paired though, it worked! That's weird. Ugh, this parry is fucking weird. You see this shit? Uh, what up, dude? I had a little violence, that's a good one. Love Leo, great character. Seems like the movie uses the wall. I mean, yeah, it might wall splat, I'm not sure. I mean, look, at it knocks back like, it doesn't wall splat, look. That, well, maybe that does. Actually, maybe that does. That might wall splat, but, I don't know how, like, it was able to block. It's fucking weird. players think of this parry. The window just seems so strict. Whatever, it's supposed to be highs and mids. I don't think it works for kicks. Down four plus two three and fuck up. <laughs> That's funny. What's down four plus two three? Oh, okay. <laughs> How do you fuck up? Oh, okay, because it's two plus three by itself. Weird. That's a weird fucking move. At the very least, if you fuck it up, that's safe on block, I guess. But yeah, I don't know about that. All right, next is forward two, which now we know has an extension thanks to the magic four combo. That appears to be a natural combo. Yeah, plus six. Forward 2 is 14 frame startup. So this could be if you need some range on the 14 frame Punisher. Right? That's good range. Keep it full, okay? About two back dashes. Yeah, a little more than two back dashes. Look at that. That's good range. Very good range. So it is a high though, but if you need some range on the whip punisher, or if you need some range on the block punisher, 14 frames, forward 2-2, two, two, seems pretty good. Um, it is negative 12 on block though, so be careful. And if you're fishing for the second hit on counter hit, it does that knockdown, just like the uh, parry. Let's check the track. Don't fucking whip that shit. Oh man, you get to the rear. Oh, it's a solid for the left side. At negative four, it tracked. Yeah, this is a really, really solid uh, tracker for your left as Liam. But. Unsafe. You just want to fish for the first hit, though. It's only negative five on block, and it is plus on hit. And it is, was it 14 damage? 
14 damage. So forward two by itself, that's pretty good. No counter hit properties on the forward two though. All right, just a little two more damage, but still. So if you want like a you know a good tracker, this is a good choice. So long range block punisher, long range, pretty long range with punisher, and a solid tracker to Leo's left side. Uh, I'm doing it in a semi-random order, add a little violence. If you scroll down, you see the link to my YouTube. I've done about a third of the cast. I took a break recently to play through Yakuza 0 and Yakuza Kiwami, which I just finished yesterday. And now I'm going back to doing these while I'm in school. So next on the list is, is Paul, and then I'm probably going to do Eddie. I've been wanting to do the next level battle costume names, people that go to that, but because uh, my school schedule gets in the way of me going to that, that's less of a priority for me now. Either way it goes, those are probably going to be my next two characters. I've already done all of the new casts except for Akuma. I've done Asuka, I did Steve, I did Huarang. I did Lee last, last time. Lee kind of sucks. Uh, and yeah. Alright, back to this. Uh, so that was forward 2-2. Two, two. Alright, next we got forward 3. Forward 3. This is uh, more with counter hit properties, right? Yep, I don't know what's guaranteed. I'm gonna guess that. Oh, you can pick up, huh? That's probably a juggle here. One of those, like, Lee 1 plus 2 style juggles, right? Anybody know there's a pickup? Hitman got nerfed. Um, 45 damage versus 41 damage. But there doesn't appear to be a, any other follow-ups. Anybody know of any? Forty-eight damage. I know any better pickups, uh, you get dive forward and then while standing one plus two. Ah, okay. 55 damage. You know what's cool about that? Very situational thing, of course. First of all, one thing you should know about this when you're at the wall with a balcony break, you have a low jungle starter with the health sweep, right? That becomes a low jungle starter. What's uh, a post uh, tailspin ender? Isn't there like a three hit string or some shit? Well, whatever. You get the idea. Oh, you get you get what I'm putting down here. You're picking up what I'm putting down here, right? So 
if you got spacing for that kind of shit, you gotta be ready to attack on that damage. Leo in general seems to be uh, really good with balcony break. A lot of moves that like to send you flying backwards that are safe on block, you know. <laughs> That's something you should consider. And of course, at the you know, getting opponents to the wall, that's in general, that's a good tool to have, right? So forward three is kinda slow though. Plus four on regular hit, 20 frame startup. Uh, it goes into Bach. Bach. And forward three on hit into Bach is plus one. It's only plus one, okay. Still good enough to make the one, Bach one, interrupt most options. Let's see if it's enough to crush jabs. I think that transition is for juggles. Looks like it's uh, more than plus one. Yeah. So, RB Norway got this one wrong. Definitely at least plus uh, four. Because it's interrupting my cross jab. See? Of course, she has the high homing move to stop from sidestepping Bach. Oh, speaking of that, I didn't test the uh, tracking on the Bach stuff, did I? So even in this situation, you can't do that. Okay, side step right again. Huh, okay. So Bach is either one side or the other, right? Yeah, oh, in general you can't, really. Yes. Oh, Leo, why do you have that move? It's like, oh, it's okay to make this move that stupid as it is, as it is, because it's a high. That's the trade-off, right? Fuck that. That shit is dumb. This should work. That looks like it has a good hitbox. But of course, the sp Yeah, see? Right. Yeah, one option to catch low profile and stuff. And the knee also tracks to the left side. And of course, the homing is going to track to both sides. Right? But it's slow, so you could always just cancel into block. But it is plus nine, so. Oof, I'm slow. Fuck that shit. So if you're fighting against Leo and you get hit and you know that this is coming and you want to sidestep, make sure to cancel your sidestep to a block. Like this. You'll make the mids whiff. Honestly, I would cancel it to duck. Cause fuck it, if the knee's gonna hit me, let the knee hit me. That'll be the same mix-up if it hits me or if it doesn't hit me, right? If the knee, the can, uh, the can can me. But if you make uh, the mids whip and the high whip, you'll get launchers, right? It makes sense to me. Getting ahead of myself. <laughs> uh, back to the action. This is uh, forward three. I'm looking at so forward three. I'm thinking this is only like a juggle thing, right? Going to Bach. 
Also, it seems like it would fuck up your follow, right? If you get a counter hit and you go into Bach, like, what would you pick up with? I'm thinking that that Bach transition is only for jumps, right? She could, uh, nope, I mean the sweep. I guess. Man, that sweep is so cheap. 24 damage? I didn't realize it was that strong. Fuck, that's a lot of damage for that sweep. Um, good thing they made it worse on block. That shit used, can you believe this shit used to be like negative 14? Like when you block it, it was one of those lows that uh, she would keep doing the animation. And it was only negative 14. Now they made this shit like negative, like proper ass health sweep on block punishable, you know? Anyway. Uh, oh shit. This is bringing back good memories already. Next is. Oh, I was reading this wrong. This is plus one on hit. On block, sorry. This is plus one on block. So I was reading that wrong. Let's try this again. And it crushes high still. Okay, so the crouch is gonna work, right? Yeah. All right, yeah, does he have 12 frame in? Is that 12 frames? 13. No 12 frame mid for Leo. Well, there you go. Exchange with 12 frames. Okay, so that's better than I thought. It is a high, though. It is a slow high, though. So if you want to force the box, some sort of box shit on block, I guess that's an okay option. Bit risky though. The tracking, it probably tracks where he was to the left side, if I were to guess. <clears throat> I guess wrong. Off of plus two force crouch, it seemed to work well enough. Oh yeah, no real tracking at all on this shit. <laughs> the AI is not supposed to be able to do that the way he just did, but whatever. Alright, so next we got... 4 plus 1 plus 2. That's the shoulder. shoulder. That's the slow shoulder, but it's a lot of damage, 32, and it has a ton of range. Four plus one plus two. Can you uh, hold back off of that knockdown? You sure can. What about counter hit? Okay, you can, but if you don't, guarantee follow up of some sort. Probably another shoulder, right? It's a four for one plus two throw, huh? Alright, well, maybe not so many free follow ups. <laughs> uh, Alright. Next we got four plus two plus three. Ah, this is a weird move. It says it knocks down with a parentheses here. Is there any sort of parry involved with this move? It looks like it. Because it's like sidestep while holding the left hand up. And then palm thrust with the right. That looks like this is Sabaki involved in that move. Let's 
see it on the move list in my show. That's uh, four plus two plus three. No, it doesn't. It does auto sidestep right, as you can see. So if you sidestep right before doing it, you get a nice little double sidestep attached to that. Caught the back there. Look at that. Hitting in the rear. <laughs> this is... What is this on block? This is safe on block. Negative nine. So this is a really evasive move. I'm guessing that parentheses on RB Norway is for hitting a side or a back turn opponent because some moves lose their knockdown properties in that situation. This one clearly doesn't. You get the back. Alright, well, I got a 9 on block. Uh, I mean, this isn't, this isn't really something you check the tracking for because you don't use this move in that way, right? But, um,. Of course it's gonna work on that side, right? Because it auto sidesteps, it seems to like realign pretty well. So it seems hard to sidestep. Seems like one of those you sidestep late, if at all. <clears throat> Switch sides when I side them in the other direction. <laughs> That's fuck. This is this is a move that just fucks with your guard. I think it's a high. I mean, you're not gonna duck it on reaction, but it is a high, so if you do duck it. It recovers quite slow, as you can see. Look at that. You can wait all day to confirm that whip and get a launch. So if you do happen to duck it. It's got pretty good range. This is a good move. Negative nine. Without much pushback. So you, you can't really sidestep at all after it, but it is safe on block. And if you sidestep right first, and they happen to swing, you might get the rear. Wayne Gamble's Leo is hard to beat for most people in this country. I mean, he's pretty good. He's not like nobody right despite what uh the shit with anakin might tell you <laughs> anyway um and bloodhawk has quite a good leo also next we got ah down forward one i'm a big fan of down forward one folks as some of you might know so so once again talk about your basic tech and fundamentals right you always want to have that one go, at least one go to mid poke. And typically, if your character has a 13 frame down forward one style poke, that's not any worse than, let's say, negative three on block in the case of Kazumi. That will probably be your go to mid poke. Leo has down forward one. Funky looking one. A lot of pushback on him. Negative one on block in the case of Leo, which is about as good as it gets. I don't know if there's any more. I don't know if they have any down forward ones that are. Zero on block like Miguel's was in Tekken 6. But uh, still, so the thing about Leo's down forward one, much like let's say Dragon Off, there is a built in follow up that's a counter hit combo. And it's a high, safe on block high. Uh, but Leo, unlike Dragon Off, Leo's knocks you right on your ass in front of her, while Dragon Off knocks you away for wall splat. So there's like Oki here, it's good Oki, you know what I'm saying? That might even be guaranteed, that down four. I think that down four is guaranteed there, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's guaranteed.
So 35 plus 8 damage. Was it 43, 42? My last isn't great. I think it's 42. No, 8 damage? It's 43 damage. Pretty good. That's guaranteed. But obviously, I mean, do I need to tell you the risk? It's mid high. You can duck the second hit. Uh, I can beat Steve's Leo. Oh, beat. I was like, what the fuck, beat? <laughs> Steve's Leo just Wayne Leo is different. Yeah, cause Wayne Gamble fucking goes ham on like crazy shit, crazy reads. While Bloodhawk tends to play more by the book. That's the difference I noticed when I watch them at least. Not that I watch too many tournaments. Anyway, so y'all know about this move. This is a Leo classic. How does it track though? Not for the ones get weird with the tracking, cause at plus one of a jab. They'll track okay-ish, but in like a negative one situation, they'll lose the tracking completely. Some of them just track really well though. So as you can see, this is one of those cases you sidestep toward the move. When you sidestep away from the move, you get See, negative one, nope. Oh, they don't want to hit there. Plus one though. Can't sidestep. Negative one. Can't sidestep. Oops. Try not to finish the screen. Okay, this seems to reliably track for Leo to Leo's right side. Which is nice, because forward two tracked in the other direction, right? So that's two fast moves to cover. Yeah, good shit. You got two pretty, you got a 13 frame move to track to one side, a fast one. And then you have a four, uh, what was it, 14? 14 frame move to track to the other side, even though this one's a high. That's pretty good. And of course, because it tracks to Leo's right, it makes it effective to sidestep left before doing it. Because then what ends up happening is you realign toward the weak side. And then all of a sudden it becomes a pain in the ass. You don't even need a big sidestep to do it, as you can see. Of course, you can just hold forward a little bit. Same thing. All right, next. <sighs> oh yeah, the down forward one is plus seven on hit, but it does some pushback. So if you have a long range, like 14 to 15 frame move that's usually linear, they probably won't be able to sidestep it like that. See, this move, plus one, doesn't really track. But when you connect with uh, not forward one, you got a 14 frame linear mid that will catch movement. See? Good range on that. I don't know if there's a follow up to that, is there? The back four has a follow up, right? Okay, see, this is too slow to really make, take advantage of that. So in general, you can tack on an extra poke. And that is negative six, but if you if you were to do the sequence, right? If you were to connect with this and then go for this right after where you know they can't sidestep, you'll be at negative six with a lot of space. So you might actually be able to move. That's what's good about this kind of poking in my opinion. Basically a very low you have a very low risk option. Probably armor through it or something like that, right? Uh, but that's about it. Otherwise, or a parry or sabaki, whatever, right? Or counter. Outside of that, you gotta block it. You can't move. How about backdash? So this might prove me wrong. Nope, can't backdash. As long as you don't delay your follow up. Can't backdash. In general though, if they get hit by down forward one, don't go for another down forward one. As you can see, it pushes back. So don't do down forward one to down forward one. Unless it's on block. Then I, I generally like to do if a negative one to down forward one. I'll do the two in a row all day long. Because if I ha have her stand guard the first one and then try to backdash, oh, never mind that. <laughs> Not good enough. Dragon Nose has a little bit more range, I think, because he has his hand open and he sticks it out. But in the case of Leo, can't quite do it. 
By the way, keep this in mind when you're using pokes like this, these, these down forward ones. The range varies. Like, uh, Lee's range is probably similar to this, because he, he, like, punches really short range. So, you gotta always watch for the back dash. The fortunate thing for you is, if you bait out a back dash, if they actually want to punish it, they probably have to back dash and commit to a button to actually punish that. They can't wait and confirm it. Um, oh, Kuze! That's not a punish. Let me make a block. See? If I wanted to punish that, I have to backdash and input the attack while I'm backdashing. Full on commitment. At best, I could get a jab. At best, on reaction. So it's relatively low risk, as long as you're aware of what the situation really means. If you're just kind of mashing, then you're gonna get fucking old up, right? Just don't mash, just be aware. It's also something for you to know if you notice that people are mashing out down forward ones. Just know that if you want that high reward off of that read, backdash and just input your fucking launcher right away. As long as it's not a launcher that's gonna get you killed on block, right? Don't lucky Chloe that shit with the up forward three. But do like a 15 frame, negative 12, or negative 13 launcher. Sure, why not? That's a good uh, that's a good uh, risk reward. Alright, so that's down forward one. What's next on the list? Uh, with down forward one, two. Like I said, doesn't jail. Negative six on block. And you can duck it and launch. Counter hit. Uh, combo. You get a free down four for a total of 43 damage. Next, we got down forward three. Homing move. Nothing special. It's a standard uh, slow homing, move, homing mid that's safe on block, which means it's like, what, negative seven or eight? Negative nine. Negative 9, no special properties on counter hit. And it wall splats. No pushback, right? It's was, yeah, it was like no pushback on that, so you're right in their face at negative 9, so you gotta be careful. It's also looks like something that could be low profile really easily, if I were to guess, right? It just visually looks like that. Oh yeah, this tail spins also. So if you happen to catch people out of the air, be ready to follow that up. And the range is alright. About a back dash and a half in range. Alright, next on the list. Uh, now 4-4. Four, four. I talked about this earlier. 13. I thought it was 14. 13 frame mid poke pushes back quite a bit. It's plus 5, but look at that pushback. So if you're gonna like try to take advantage of that plus five, be real fucking careful with what you swing with because any back dash is gonna get is gonna blow up your option, right? Like if I try to do back to back, see? Forward forward two didn't even reach. That's 14 frames, so that's a frame trap. It didn't reach. You gotta hold the second forward a little bit to make it slower to catch, but that oh, that ruins the frame trap aspect of it. So yeah, this is one of those, like, keep out pokes, I guess, right? That's how I would call it. With some added range with the uh, trade-off that it pushes back. What about on guard? Ah, it does some pushback on guard, too. That's pretty good. Why did she cross that? Why did she cross that that first time? 
Anyway, as you can see. Uh, okay, okay. Maybe I can do that a little better, let's see. Okay, so point blank, no backdash. But. You put a little bit of space into that poke. You're good for a backdash. So, rewind. Let's, the situation I talked about before where it was this on hit into that. If they block it, you probably don't need a backdash at all, do you? You can just throw it down forward too. And if they swing with anything that has no range, you'll clip them. If you want to risk it, of course. You're, you're spaced out too, so they're like one little backdash or standing still or whatever away from uh, whiff punishing you too. That goes both ways. Just know that because you see negative five or whatever this shit was, negative six, what was this? Negative six. That doesn't mean that, oh, I must block, you know. It only means that if you're right in their face. You can still move around at negative six. And depending on how hard you want to make a read, you could still input buttons at negative six. Because of the spacing. It's similar to like, uh, every time I see this kind of pose, like 13 to 14 frames, just kind of kick. It always kind of pushes back in a similar way. So it's like a semi-universal thing. For example, Shaheen has something like that. It's 14 frames for him, but he has really long legs. So more range. Claudio also has something like that. And they both have fucked up hop kicks, so you already know how it is. Can't swing at those motherfuckers at all. Uh, but yeah, there's, no tra there's generally no real tracking on these kinds of moves. I tested it earlier, but just to show it off again. Plus one. Uh, down four plus super sweet is the low from four. That knocks down on normal hit. Shit, I know. I know. Nothing guaranteed though, right? That has to be guaranteed, right? Anything better than that? Forty. So dash up, it's a stomp. It's for more damage. That also might floor floor break. I'm not sure. What else? Uh, nah, I'm trying to get cute. Dash up, it's a stomp is probably where it's at, right? Oh, that recovers crouching. I didn't know. If you hold down, right? Um, like, I didn't know she had the option to recover standing off of that. Well, anyway, uh, so this knocks down. It's negative 14. I don't know Leo got a negative 14. Uh, 13. I guess it's gonna be another wall standing four situation, but at least it's a fucking really damaging wall standing four, isn't it? 34 damage? Jesus Christ. Right. And that's 16 frames, not even 15, but 15 frames you got hop kick. Damn, that's not a natural combo. Okay, so it's gonna be all standing four, one plus two stuff. Alright. 
This is slow enough that you would have to walk to get around if I were to guess. Let's see. Eh, maybe not. <laughs> Super linear. Super linear. Alright. So there's no fucking tracking on that shit at all. And it is a pretty slow low. I wouldn't call it seeable slow unless you're on some fucking crazy crack. Shit is a 23 frame startup. Crush is high. too much. Okay. Uh, just negative five. Negative five, it loses the high crush. Right. I just blocked that before, right? Yeah, see? So at negative four, it crushes, at negative five, it loses. So it needs five frames to crush, yeah? Next on the list, we got down one, 18 frames. So this is the spike move that I use off of the Magic 4, right? <clears throat> That's a fucking big whiff. So not for tracking at all. frame startup counter hit jungle starter plus four to plus five forces crouch so let's say plus four forces crouch to get plus five you probably need it off of Loki or some shit but you're not gonna get that reliably just call it plus four only negative three on block, but it doesn't force crouch now. Yeah, you can visually see it as a force crouch. It's a pretty good move. I mean, it's linear, but... Like, Shaheen has something like this, but it's shitty on block. This is only negative three on block. You could actually move after this is blocked. It's about two back dashes. About two back dashes in uh, in distance it covers, and then if you hold down, you could recover crouching. So if you hit, if you hit them with it, and you hold down, you can buy into a, you can make them buy into a full cross mix up, Same. which is always this low versus something else. Counter hit, uh, it's a standing two. Standing two, it's a back one or whatever, right? I'm sure there's better options, but as a starter, you could always just. What about on if you crouching? Cross cancel do a standing too. What up, Shane? This character is pretty cheap. Good stuff so far. 
So you can still, even if you're holding down, you can crouch cancel and get a standing two pickup. That's actually quite difficult. did it before, so maybe it's not reliable. I could just suck, I don't know. Maybe could cross cancel it's a back one but raw, right? Gotta be a way to get a consistent combo if you hold down off of that. Even though I don't know quite know what it is. Alright, well anyway, next on the list is down two. This is plus on block. Mid. Plus two force crouch. Plus eight force crouch on hit. And on counter hit, you probably got a free stomp, right? Yeah, free stomp seems to be the best case. Uh, the way that hits, you probably don't get the free follow up. Even if that is guaranteed, I guess. Yeah, definitely not. So I guess go for the stomp, which might floor break. Don't know yet. So I doubt Down 2 has any tracking, and it is pretty slow. This is one of those slow moves that'll catch people stepping, though. If you were to go right into it like that. Uh, not so much on that side. <laughs> but the right side, at least. I wouldn't call it a tracking move, though. It's just slow. So if they time the side step better than that, you'll, uh, you'll lose out, for sure. Still, this is one of those moves that might be pretty good if, when you got people pressured, especially so at, uh, somewhere like the wall. They're afraid to move or whatever. If you got him scared for whatever reason, you could just kind of throw this on top of the offense. And of course, also, if you knock him down and they tech and you can time it well, they'll be forced to block that shit 100%. Can't armor, can't, maybe you could rip, um, EXDP, but you know. Can't armor, can't zipper, you need, you need uh, like 8 frames to start up on all that shit. This is one of, this is one of those things you want to use, um, one of the many options if you want like a safer or an option that won't like an option to catch people that like to tech into mash or moving this will be an option you can just t as long as you time it well you can throw that out there and if you guessed wrong and they actually stood up and block you're still uh, you don't lose advantage you get plus two so that's one way to use this move Plus eight force cross is great too. Remember, when they're force cross, they can only um, instantly sidestep towards the background. Which, if you're playing online, usually the giveaway for which way they can sidestep is one P two P side. When you're offline, when you're online, it doesn't work like that because the opponent could pick a side. You know what I'm saying? You can always pick the start on the left side, and that reverses things. Either way it goes, they'll only be able to consistently sidestep instantly in the consistent. They'll only be able to instantly sidestep in one direction in the force crop situation. So force crop plus even that plus two is nice, but that plus eight is fucking great. You really limit their options. Plus standing three, back one four. You cover crouching after down one. I tried that. Ah, uh, I guess I gotta really mash that shit out, don't I? Down two is a pretty good move. Next we got down four. Which has an extension.
That's a counter hit extension. It is a high. Uh, so this is like using like as a follow up off of certain things in general. Uh, but the extension is really just there to like catch people pressing shit when they shouldn't, or if you feel like you got a read on the counter hit. Because there's no visual indicator on the counter hit, so there's no confirm. And you can't delay this, so you have to commit. But it kind of buffs uh, this by itself, because it is negative one. But like I said earlier, that extension will cause some sort of hesitation. Or either that, or it'll cause people to duck after they get hit by this. So if you know that, you can try to throw out a mid, but typically people will just duck and stand up right away. So you could delay, you could do this, and then go into a delayed low. That'll catch people doing the fuzzy. Delaying your option is always how to beat a fuzzy. Always. Delay your option just a little bit. You do something like bot. Bot <laughs> or bot dash up bot as long as you just put a little bit of delay on it for some sort of reason. It'll catch people with the fuzzy. And all of a sudden people will start focusing on doing this instead of pressing buttons because you're negative one. That's what having an option like that does. Just realize that there is risk involved. Good damage on a second hit. So 23 damage. And um that's a knockdown that uh, ah, that's a knockdown that might not give you no that that will give you a wall splat. I think that will give you a wall splat. I'm thinking of a different knockdown. I'm thinking of the Brian forward to uh, two one four whatever that string is two one three. That's that's the knockdown that doesn't give you a wall splat. Or Jack's old knockdown off of the forward two in tag two, the counter hit forward two. That knockdown did not give you a wall splat. All right, so let's see the tracking on this low. That's pretty solid for your right side. Ah, one of them low pokes that tracks universally pretty well. Very good. I always like seeing this. This is always a good tool to have. All right, how much damage is it? 10 damage, so usually usually a low poke like this, that tracks like this, is, uh, it's also 16 frames, so it's pretty fast. <clears throat> um, usually they do low damage, so it doesn't surprise me. You don't delay it too much like I did there. Woo! Okay, okay, so you can sneak around it. Not off of a jab, though. Off of any sort of plus situation, as long as you're close, I guess, let's say. Let's not say let's not say that for range, but up close for sure. It'll track reliably. Alright, so next is Oh yeah, and that hits grounded too. Okay, I gotta scroll down here. The built-in follow-up has some pushback, doesn't it? Yeah, it's negative five with pushback, so you could actually backdash and move around perfectly fine. Unless you're, they're at the wall, I'm guessing. They might push you back at the wall, I don't know. <laughs> All right, next we got down back to this is one of those weird ass moves, isn't it? This is 14, 14 frame high, 28 damage. This is the move I saw before. No, forward two, two is the one I saw before. This is the one you actually want to be a 14 frame block puncher, probably, right? 35 damage. This is also high, high mid. Uh, what's the purpose of this move? Oops. Well, it's got that.
That stump is probably still guaranteed. So it's one of those where you could fish for a second hit, but the down back two by itself, it's shitty on block. I don't... Nah, this move is weird. Maybe it's a juggle like Ender to spike them. Floor break, maybe. In a neutral situation, I don't see a good usage for this. It's like, yeah, you could delay the second hit. And it is safe, I guess. So that would be the way to use it, because you could delay it quite heavily. It's not hit confirmable. But the first hit is negative 17. So if you stop at the first hit, like people that match are gonna fuck you up. Whatever. I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world because the second hit is safe. Usually it's the other way around, right? Usually this will be something like negative five or some shit and then the second hit will be like negative 12 or something but it'll have some counter hit properties. This is the reverse of that. It's kind of unusual, I guess. But if you really want to use it in a neutral situation, It'll be to set up that delay to catch people. But you're at negative 17 if they do nothing. That's why I'm thinking it sucks. It's got good range, but fucking whatever. Step forward makes it look like it's a low and a, and a high. Alright. Now I'm back to Trey. Okay, we know about this fucked up move. I'm gonna take a moment to use the bathroom. I'll be right back in a minute, all right? Don't nobody go nowhere. And then I'll talk about this bullshit backswing blow move. Be right back in a sec. Alright, I'm back. Whoosh. RIP to Cherry Coke Zero. Now it's like all the Coke Zero brands are like some zero sugar bullshit now. I mean, it's zero sugar in general. They just rebranded it and changed the taste apparently. 
I don't know how I lose that thing. It's so big. Here it is. By the way, peoples, any Tekken related questions that I could help with, feel free to ask. It doesn't have to be about Leo. If I know it, I'll answer. Is Aris streaming? Oh, Aris is streaming. Let me see. When did he start? Okay. Well, whatever. Let me get back to the action over here. Switch music. It's my playlists. I lost track of which playlist is which at this point. Let's go with one a JRPG music. <laughs> So now, we're talking about this bullshit fucking move, right? Safe on block high, backswing blow that goes under a lot of mids. A lot, a lot, a lot of freaking mids. This is one of those things where it's like unique to Leo if you're a Leo player. Where if you, if you see a lot of like strings that go into stances or just annoying strings in general, this is one of those things you want to hit up the lab and test how good it is at blowing that stuff up, right? It's gonna avoid a lot of shit, and if it connects, you get a very, very high damage launch. I don't even know what the follow-up is, but I know it's like, you probably get some real good shit off of that, don't you, right? Ah, no problem, Toka. Glad I can help, man. That's why I do these. And remember, this isn't Leo exclusive. I, I'm, going, I'm eventually gonna go through the whole cast. Everybody, you scroll down, you'll see my YouTube link. I've already uploaded a bunch of other characters, and this is just me learning too. This is why I do this stuff. I learn. Sometimes people in the chat give me some advice because they play these characters and I don't. I don't go. This move is bullshit. This fucking move is bullshit, right? Let's see what it is on block. <clears throat> Negative A on block with pushback. You'll probably be able to backdash and get away from a lot of a lot of stuff. With And jab. Down forward too. Okay. So you'll get away from at the very least jabs and the back dash is safe. See? The back dash is safe. But there's no harm. If you get this block, there's pretty much zero harm in going for a back dash. Because what if I were to go over low? Let's see. The low doesn't reach. The, that low will reach at least. Okay. But the most dangerous low? doesn't reach. What if she didn't backdash? What if you uh, blocked that and I just held back? Will it still reach? Oops. Okay. Okay, so you're just spaced well enough to naturally get away from that low. But in other instances, you might escape a dangerous low, or at least force the opponent to have to dash to connect the, the most dangerous low. In this specific matchup scenario, you just naturally is get away from dangerous love. So there's no harm in inputting a backdash there at all. Um. <laughs> Down back three was your savior. Uh, you know about Milo? Were you, you you were here when I did Huarang, right? You know about Down back three, right? You know about how cheap that shit is. Down back three into flamingo. <laughs> I talked about that one. For those of you that don't know, Huarang has Down back three into flamingo. A low that on block is negative one. And in that flamingo, right flamingo stance, he has an eight frame high counter hit launcher. So if you were to block that and try to wall standing for him, he will counter hit launch you. Pretty fucked up. 
Oh, man. I kind of lost myself over here. Where the hell is it? Down back four? Down back three. Okay, here it is. So, has a lot of startup, right? What is that? That's the damage. That's the startup, right? So, Corner Army Norway, 31 frame startup, right? The boss is 25 for the quest mark for some reason. So, it's slow. It's slow enough that you could actually react and duck, right? And that, in my opinion, is a key thing to punishing this move. You see that duck, right? And you happen to not swing. I'm, you see, like, Leo do that duck, you happen to not swing. Fucking duck. The only thing that, that will mess with your head is, animation-wise, it looks exactly like fucking Bach. Right? Be okay. It looks exactly the same. Right? The fucking right hand goes up in the air. Doing the freaking DDP yoga stretch, right? Whatever they call that shit. Where you touch the, the floor with your left hand and you raise the right hand up the other way. While you're twisting your body. But still, another giveaway is audio. And this is why you can't underrate audio. It's, but then again, when she does the... Yeah, whatever, right? He's already swinging it, so you can't really react to the audio, I guess. But B.O.K. Okay has that little huh, right? If you're listening for it, huh, 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 yeah, right? So I guess if you're really sharp and you're good at reacting to the audio, you could consider that awesome. Still though, don't, you know, this is a fucking obnoxious move. This is one of the moves you can just throw out whenever and avoid. Like I showed this earlier, right? Back one, four. You're gonna, you're gonna get away with it. You're gonna get away with it. Right? You're gonna get away with it, see? Yeah! I don't know what that example's gonna take up. That's probably too fast, right? Yeah, that's too f that, that jails. You can't press anything. So that, that's not a good example. Uh, what, what other example can I think of? Uh, Wasn't there a move back? I saw one before. I forget the info for it now. Well, whatever. You know, Eddie automatically sidesteps out of back 1 4 <laughs> because of his stance. <laughs> I can't think of any other examples right now, but there's a lot of shit that that blows up, right? What about if I record, uh, let's just record a simple jab into down forward two. Will that get away with it? Oh, not that. How about jab into down forward one? That's a popular follow-up. Gets under that. What about jab into hop kick? Yeah, get out of here with that shit. Good thing that down forward two has uh, a good hitbox. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't launch duckers, <laughs> so get fucked. Uh, what about a uh, jab into back one? That would counter hit. Yep. Good. What about if I delayed it a bit, though? <laughs> a little bit of delay is all you need. A little delay is all you need. Let's revisit Jab to Down Forward 2. So this move is bullshit. This is one of those moves like, I feel like I'm safe. I feel like they're going to press a button. I'm just going to do it. That's, that's This is a fucking panic button, a really annoying one, a really messed up one. But it's not without risks. It's not without big risks if you're fighting a good opponent. I thought there's any real tracking in this. Let's see. And I think she, she had this. It's not like this is new. People are discovering this now because of that one tournament where Wayne Gamble was blowing up whoever the fuck it was with it. It's not new. It was always this bullshit. Alright, no checking at all, not even for step. Alright, well you got a little bit there. Yeah, if you're stepping, 
If you step left and you commit to a button, you're gonna get clipped. So be mindful of that. Unless it's a button that interrupts. Also, and you know what's really fucked up about this I'm noticing now? A lot of backswing blow style moves have shit range. As in like, if I were to do it from here, most backswing blow moves, most, not all, it would be a situation where they would have to come in with a button or just dash in to get hit by it. Otherwise it would whiff if they were to stand still. Double Jin has one that's like a kick also, but his is unsafe. This shit reaches. Look at that. That shit has mad range. Look at that range. One back dash. One, two. All right, one and a half. All right, one back dash, which is more than most. You, do, you try that shit with Dragon Offs, that shit is gonna be whiff city. Giant whiff. And it's super unsafe on block. It's like negative 15 or 14. But it is a mid and it is a no ball, so fucking whatever, right? Can't have them all, right? <laughs> uh, Dragon Ball's fine without it. Being safe. Anyway, so that's that move. Next on the list is down back four. This is the Hell Sweep, as people like to call it. So people, when, when people say Hell Sweep, like, oh, this character's Hell Sweep, people typically mean it's a move category that knocks down, is low, is pretty fast, considered unseeable fast. Relatively fast. Fast enough to be unseeable. An unseeable low that knocks down and does good damage. That's typically what people mean by a hell sweep. But there's really only a couple of real hell sweeps in this, you know, Devil Jin, Kazuya, and Heihachi. Those are the hell sweeps that are like, what, 15, 16 frame startup animation wise. Uh, this is down back four. The actual hell sweep is down back four, one. If you do not input the one, it never trips. Never ever trips. Never ever gonna trip. Right? But the cool thing about this is even on like the most shallow of hit, it will be it will combo. While certain other lows, like let's say Paul's Demolition Man, if you're like shallow, off axis and shit like that, it doesn't combo. It like it fucks up. It fucks up. You saw you guys that watched the uh, stuff on Aris' stream yesterday from the tournament East Coast Throwdown saw it happen to Anakin more than once. You saw it at least three times if I recall right with Demolition Man. Demolition Man has a lot more damage than this stuff, but still. Uh -huh. I showed off earlier that if the opponent's back is on balcony break, this will become a combo starter, a juggle starter. But keep that in mind. Uh, 30, 30 damage, 30 set, 36 damage. So that's that's the actual difference for Leo. This is one of those moves that has a property called clean hit. You see, I'm right in his freaking face, right in her face. You hit the clean hit. And when I'm back here, ugh, when I'm back here, there's no clean hit. So it's 30 damage instead of 36 damage. That's the only thing that matters in regards to clean hit in this situation. There are a couple of other moves that do, there are a couple of other lows that only knock down on clean hit. For example, Dragonall's down back three sweep. He only gets to juggle on clean hit. And the thing about a little quick anti Dragonall tip here for down back three is one back dash and you're away from clean hit. All of a sudden, that slow, relatively seeable low. Becomes high risk, low reward. It just hits you, you stay standing, and he's actually at negative five. But if you're right in his face and he clean hits you, he gets to juggle. Typically for lows, clean hits mean you're hitting both legs, typically. So you see the sweep? It's technically reaching far enough to hit both legs. And you get the sweep. Uh, it has, yeah, it has a, a, special, a special key charge follow-up. Yeah, two, as uh, Milo said. <laughs> Blah! 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 Anyway. <laughs> so yeah, this is like, this is the high risk comeback low. It probably goes without saying here. It's absolutely horrendous on block. No matter what distance you block it from. Of course, 
You need range if you block it from distance. Oops. So if you're fighting a, a character who has like shit range on their wall standing, and they, they're gonna have to do something funky here. Like thankfully, wall standing too will cover you for the range. But if you see something like this happen, right? If you're a character that's trying to punish this against Leo and you notice that that's happening, you need to go into training mode, block this shit from max range, and get used to crouch canceling into doing something else that has better range. Whether it's crouch cancel, dash, you see I was able to dash and still get it. See? Look at that dash hop kick punish still. Still punish. See? Also, if you block the second hit, it's still a uh, negative 16. So you will get a, a, most likely, unless you're like Steve, you'll get a launch. Hell, this is what? Negative 31, Steve could up forward two from crouching to block punish that. So Steve ain't gonna have any any problem block punishing the low. The punch, he won't get much. He'll get forward one plus two, two. Maybe back, no, back to his 17, right? I forget. If back to his 16, then Steve will have that. For juggle. Huarang, he could cross cancel back, uh, what, what's it called, uh, Plasma Blade, which would be better damage than that new up back 3-4, three, 4-3, four, four, three, whatever the fuck it's called. Shit like that. Alright, let's see the tracking on this. Because in the case of Hell Sweep, it only tracks to one side. Somebody texted me, I gotta actually look at that one. Let me guess, Josh. Sorry about this. Yep, it's Josh. I'll, I'll respond to him later. <sighs> Anik is playing ex PC exclusively? Damn, everybody's making the jump, aren't they? Alright. I finished Yakuza Kiwami, that's why. I'm gonna go back and forth between Tekken and uh, Nier. Auto Automata. Next. So anyway, this seems to track well to that side, right? To the left side. Track step quite well. This tracks very well. Yeah, unlike Hell Sweep, you're covered in all directions. This tracks very well. That's fucked up. <laughs> so you, if you're dealing with this, you gotta backdash or try to backdash away from it or fucking block it. Just block it. It's not seeable on reaction. It's 20 frames. Not seeable on reaction. So many new players are like, oh, am I supposed to see lows or am I supposed to react? Guess what? This is one of those where you're supposed to guess. You're supposed to get the read and then block punish. That's just the nature of the beast. That's just the way it is. Get good. All right. The cool thing about this one, though, is the first hit by itself is actually plus. You don't see that very often with this. It's uh, plus two. Really risky though. Like if you're gonna go for this low, do the follow. -up. Do the fucking follow. -up. Look at you're adding 18 damage. You want to go for an 18 damage clean hit low. That's plus two or 12 damage from long range. 12 damage low poke. That's fucking negative 31 on block plus two on hit. Don't do that. Uh, I mean, it's not the you know whatever. I was gonna say it's not the worst thing in the world. Just don't do it. Just come in. Come in every time. Commit every fucking time to the one. The only time that will fuck you over is if this happens. Then it fucks you over, because then they'll block the mid and launch you. Or make the mid whiff and then launch you. So yeah, that's that low. Next is, oh yeah, also, crushes, doesn't it? The 
crushing properties are kind of shitty. But it does crush also, which is fucked up. Because Hell Sweep does not crush. Ah, not a negative one. Oh, take that back. Yeah, if I delay my jab at all, a couple of frames, Leo gets under. Interesting. So there is some late high crush properties in, in that low. Uh, in that low on top of everything else. Because it needed that for some reason. Whatever. Fuck that move. Next. Now I'm back plus one plus two. That's this move. It has one extension follow-up, which is natural combo. <clears throat> this is a popular wall spat move, I think, right? When you size it up close. Um, 21 frame startup. That's a high damage to his string, 37, I guess, but it is negative, what is it? Negative 12. And the first hit by itself, plus seven on hit, negative nine on block, it says. Yep, negative nine on block, negative 12 on block for the second hit. Uh, see here that. Leo in her least dangerous habitat, infinite stage. <laughs> That's a good point. I will say that, yeah, I, I would be a lot less afraid of Leo in an infinite stage. Even with the slash kick. Yeah, that, that slash kick is kind of bullshit. Like, Leo doesn't suck in an infinite stage, but Leo definitely is, like, significantly more scary in a walled stage. I've, I've always felt that way, even, like, not knowing much about, about her. You know, and now I'm, you know, learning this stuff and finding out better why. Shit like this. That's plus nine. You know? Yeah, sure, you could backdash away from that easily enough in the middle in the middle of the stage, but at a walled stage, yeah. And of course, running three. But you know, this is a, a slow running three. Well, it's not that slow, it's 23, according to this. Damn. My instant while running is weak. There it is. Oh. Alright. So anyway. <clears throat> plus nine slash kick. Plus nine high homing kick. Off of uh, Bach. <clears throat> so down back plus one plus two also has Bach attached to it. Plus four on hits. Negative twelve on block. <laughs> under the mid! Under the mid! Under the mid! <laughs> That's a problem with like most down forward one pokes like this. I bet she Kazumi's will hit her though, right? But these generic down forward one mid pokes, the punches, they tend to ha not have the best hitboxes, right? For this kind of stuff. So you gotta keep that in mind. Yeah, it's fast, but hey. Same thing with that. Oh, 17 frame mid. Homing move. If I, if I don't delay it. If I delay it, it hits. If I don't delay it, even though negative 12, right over. Cross jab. Oh, cross jab gets crushed. Cross jab gets crushed. So this is one of those where you could go into, you get him afraid using the built-in follow-up. That's hit convertible, I think. It makes sense. This is why people use this at the wall. See, I was wondering when I saw the frame date, I was like, huh, why do people use this for wall spy? It's unsafe. That's why. Hit confirmable. Woo, easy hit confirmable. No matter how much I delay it, it combos. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's a good move. Especially at the wall. And then you have the whole thing where, I mean, you can't, you're not gonna be able to like confirm it and go into be okay, I think. I mean, you can, but that's a huge, well, maybe not. 
But you just have that little BOK -okay shit as an extra incentive to like, maybe be careful what you swing with after blocking this, right? <laughs> so there's like a high risk thing going on, but you can make it work. Very high risk depending on what your opponent is mashing. This is going to be a big window between this and that. <clears throat> right? Oh, counter hit. I didn't even think to check this on counter hit. Stupid me. Check this out. Don back four. It's also a counter hit juggle starter? I don't know what she would get, but... So yeah, down back one plus two one, and down back one plus two down. Interesting options. Just remember, practice that hicker firm. Practice, practice, practice. How do I practice hicker firm, Manny? I'll tell you how in a second. You see this option that says random guard? That's how. And then you put the second option to guard on. Right? See? I'm not good at this. See? You get good at this. I'm not good at this. If I wanted to get good at this, this is what I would do for like at least an hour here and there, like a day until I get good at it. And half an hour to an hour a day. This is like throw breaking. You gotta earn it if you wanna get good at it. And then when you get good at it, you got yourself a nasty tool at the wall, even mid-stage, you got yourself a nasty tool. All right, back one, yes, here we go. The Leo gimmick of all gimmicks, right? That's still good. It's it's a gimmick that's still good at a high level. You see, you saw, you saw it at the fucking uh, Japan tournament a few days ago, right? Back one all day long. I'll get to it in a second. Let me finish this bottle. All right. So here's how this string works. Back one by itself is 18 frames, negative plus one on hit, which is on regular hit, it's kind of whatever, but it is negative 12 on block, right? So if you're against Leo, you can punish this if you see a lot of this going on. And the reason that why they would do this is because as I showed earlier, there's a lot of ways to get around back one four. Now, as you know, every time you block that knee in K and K, whether it's uh, to go into that knee into K and K, whether it's a string out of a string or by itself, it's the same situation. Leo's at plus was it nine, and you can't press shit. You have to like guess, sort of sidestep, sort of not. But as I showed earlier, back one four, you can get away from it. How do you get away from it? Well, you take your character and you test. Um, can I sidestep to my left after the back one? If you can, then you could go right into your launcher, and as long as that knee comes out, you will hit everything. Go for a mid option, not a high option. Go for a mid launcher, and you will, as long as it's not super slow, you will hit everything. But what happens if you're not Leo? I'm sorry, what happens if you cannot sidestep to the left? Well, let me show you right now. 
I've showed this before, but I'm gonna show it again. I've also talked about this before. like knocking my stick to the beat and it probably is off sync <laughs> on your end right so Jin Kazama right I'm getting so crazy into crazy into electrics if I start I won't be able to stop Jin Kazama he cannot sidestep it <laughs> right not up close at least if he's far away like most of the cast will be able to sidestep it if they shadow block back one so you got other options. Jin happens to be able to parry, right? That's one option. And honestly, that's probably 100% safe. If Leo were to do like back one, back one, or back one to jab, let's go with the fastest option. Because it's negative 12. That punishes, okay. What about back one into 13? Okay, that punishes. Wow, this recovers slower than I thought. Okay, so as you can see, it's a big risk. I mean, you know, you're, not gonna, you're probably not gonna see that. You're probably gonna see back one into back one. Still, know that that window is there, right? To get punished. So, the fucking parry is pretty risky. Well, here's what else Jin could do. Back one. And an on reaction, you could launch that. <laughs> on reaction. Of course, if there's nothing to happen, you cancel it with down forward into block. Otherwise, you're gonna get hit. See? And of course, in this particular case, if you delay it, you'll make it whiff. I did it before. Oh, well, whatever. You can just cancel it into block. Uh, Steve Player's Commanual Flicker Cancel, the second hit. That's pretty cool. And Right Sway, of course. That makes sense. Sway. Wait, Right Sway? As in going towards Steve's right? I don't know about anybody that could go to the uh, to their right. Well, anyway, the unfortunate reality is not every character is able to do these kinds of things. There's one various, very, very obvious example very 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 obvious example of uh, a character that will be unable to do this kind of shit but there is one thing I want to test maybe he could do something else I mean you already know Gigas isn't gonna fucking sidestep this shit you know <laughs> what's he gonna do Regardless of the range. It's like, where are you going, Gigas? Where are you going? You go nowhere. Backdash? No. Armor? No, no armor. Gigas can't do shit. Oh! <laughs> nah, that's what I was curious about. Huh, that's interesting. So, Gigas' armor, that's a really unique armor move. The armor activates faster. Right? The general rule of thumb for armor moves, as far as I always know, is 8 frames starter to get armor. G 
she's hitting me out of that armor, but not this unique one. So then it becomes, what does he get? That's the fast move, right? Oh. He doesn't get shit. He gets, he gets extra damage, that's what he gets. Yeah, he don't get shit. So now Gigas is fucked. You gotta guess, if you're Gigas. You gotta guess. At best, let's see if, uh... He can't look, you know. He, ha he has to eat the love. Poor Gigas. Poor Gigas. As cool as his offense kind of is, I'll admit, <laughs> it's kind of fun to use. There's a reason why that character fucking sucks. There was that one guy in that Japanese tournament I was using him, right? I forgot his name. I should go watch, uh, go back and watch some of that. Is it Aerith watching the top 15 now? I think that's what he's doing. Also, I am getting kind of hungry. How long have I been at it? Two and a half hours. Yeah, I gotta make this a two-parter because I have a tendency to lose steam halfway through these. And then uh, my, my analysis gets really weak toward the end, I find. <laughs> so that's why I typically split them into two-parters. Um, what the fuck? What was that? How did I do that? That was a weird-ass backflip shit. Whatever. Um... So that's back one four. So another thing to know about back one is on counter hit, it's a juggle starter. Yay! So it's back one and then back one four two and then whatever the fuck you do afterwards, right? Back one four two, back one four three plus four. I don't know. What's the what's the uh, juggle after that? You guys know? Anybody know? Because that's a weird ass angle for the uh, tailspin, the corkscrew, or whatever. Okay. Thank you, Milo. Ah, yes. Okay. 59 damage, which is not amazing, but you know what? That's perfectly fucking fine. While standing. Three, two, one? You mean three, one, one plus two. Oh, one of those, huh? Alright. 59 damage. Three, three, two, three is uh, better. Or, of course, you could, um... That'll floor break, right? So point being, this shit is really cheap. Really, really, really cheap. Really. This is one of those where if you're playing Leo, you'll easily get to like fucking at least yellow ranks just kind of whoring this fucking string out and into that. And just messing with people. You could like toss the coin, you know, bet it all on black. And you'll work your way up the ranks. Just abusing this, your options off of this correctly. You, you you mix that up with knowing how to block a couple of things and punish properly. You fucking make it to red ranks so easily. Trust me. Trust me. Trust me, I'm a doctor. It's good shit. But that also means you don't want to rely too much on it. If you make this, you make your whole game plan while you're revolving around this bullshit all day long. You're gonna run into that brick wall that everybody runs into when it stops working. So, don't ignore it. 
Remember that it's there. Remember that's a key part of Leo's offense. But Leo has a lot of good shit going on. You don't gotta only rely on that. You have a really good whiff punisher here. And that, which I haven't even gotten to yet. Although there is some unfortunate stuff about that move specifically. This, right? <laughs> For a punishable down forward too, that's unfortunate. Let's go. Uh, was it 17? 18 frame startup, right? Let's see the, how it tracks. <laughs> Not too great. Ha! <laughs> Just use that shit to run away at that point, right? Oh, wow, caught him. That was weird, maybe because I delayed it. Yeah, put a little delay on it, you'll catch him, huh? Go figure. Ha ha, run away! Wow! <laughs> Just stayed in place for that shit. Oh, man. Oops. Yeah, just make that space run away. Anyway. Uh, that's it, right? I like how the screen shakes a little bit. That stomp. For those of you that play Virtual Fighter, <coughs> animation-wise, that's pretty much Akira's forward. Uh, sorry, six 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 P, right? Akira, the elbow, the elbow master, Virtual Fighter. Different usage, but it's like a trademark move. For those of you, for those of you that like heard people say, "Oh, I hope they add Akira as a guest character." This is fucking Akira. This is Akira. That's 666P. Uh, what do you call it? There's body check. All the Akira trademark moves. Where's SPOD? I know she has SPOD. SPOD. Where the fuck you at? I think this is it. Sorry. That's... If I'm not mistaken, that's SPOD. The same three hits. Or does he end it with the shoulder to the back? I think Leo has that too. Whatever. Point being, adding Akira is fucking redundant. Akira's cool, but don't fucking add him, please. That will be such a waste of a slot. That's as lame as, like, Kuma and Panda taking up two slots. Shit's whack. Don't add Akira. Don't add a fighting style that's already in the game, I say. Add somebody that's unique. And for those of you that don't know what SPOD is, it's Stun Palm of Doom. It's one of Akira's trademarks where if you're blocking, he breaks your guard and does like a three hit power string that takes off a shitload of life. Akira got a lot of guard breaks. Anyway, back to. Back to. Akira has that too. <laughs> this exact string, that's an Akira string. Uh, back to one plus two. He has that too, if I'm not mistaken. Alright, so this is natural combo, right? Yeah. This back two has 15 frame startup, a little weird. That's natural combo too. But if you're at negative 15, you got hop kick. I guess if hop kick doesn't reach, back two will reach. So this could be if you add a range for hop kick off of a block punish, you could consider this back to one plus two. Unfortunately, it's only 32 damage, but hey, take it. Uh, I prefer the combo off of counter hit back one four two instead of hitting counter hit back one and do it. Well, the thing about that, Milo, is you need both. You need to know both. Because you don't always want to commit to back one four, and you cannot counter hit confirm it in one four. Oh, I guess you can. I guess you can. I take that back. Make me eat my own words. If you're unable to counter hit confirm though, you kind of want to know both because you want the ability to do back one by itself. Oh, nice shit. Haven't gotten there yet. Oh, that's natural combo, huh? Interesting. That's a, what you 2D players would call a link. It's plus 16. It's plus 16. Can't you, uh... Oh, 
it counts as the opponent crouching. What a shame. What a shame. And the hop kick doesn't reach. Poor Leo. Poor Leo. Get fucked. Alright. <laughs> but that works. No, uh, knockdown? That's 18 too slow. Wow, no highs. No highs allowed. The hot kick would probably work near the wall. If you want to be a real G, right? <laughs> yeah! <laughs> There's your wall splat. One more time. This is like Brian's back forward to 4 4 2. Damn, that's hard. You can't really buffer it well. There you go. Poor Leo. Only 56 damage off of uh, 19 frame. Huh. Is it like Julia shit where if the low hits by itself, you get different options? Doesn't look like it. It looks like the high has more range. What do you call it? Julia's war drum is like that. Yeah, it's because Tekken 6 uh, scaling was higher on grounded hits. It did even more in Tag 2. 135% damage. In, tag two, in Tekken 6 it was 115 damage, I think? Now it's back to 100%. 100%! Uh, next we got... So yeah, this is the back two series. So back two, one, this is only plus seven on hit, so that's pretty good. Pretty good if you want to pressure with this, because it's on, on block, I'm sure it doesn't jail, but on block, it is negative four, which means you can still generally move around. Uh, no, no real pushback. But you could sidestep perfectly fine, right? Um... And then if they start to duck, because I'm assuming it jails, right? So we want to stand guard, cross guard. See, that's when this comes in, right? And then it's plus eight force crouch on hit, which is very nice. And on counter hit, ooh, we got another counter hit jungle starter, folks. We got another one. Standing two. Yeah, standing two. Alright. So, the cool thing about that mid follow-up is it is only negative 11 on block force crouch now that's scary against Leo obviously because negative 11 is painful hey punish Yeah, negative 11. That's very low risk. Can't step it, can't back that. 
So this is really good. This is actually really good just for a neutral situation. I like this move. Like I said. And if that happens to combo, you got plus seven, a little bit of space, but plus seven. So you're still close enough to make use of that, right? Pa. Um, they block it, it's pretty good. Let's see how it tracks. Always realign, you just have to delay it. Delay it while holding forward a little bit. You'll re realign and catch it. I gotta do that more in, in all honesty during my poking. Hold forward. But then again, I don't fight man very many good opponents that sidewalk well. I see that even even in the ranks that I'm at, right? I haven't played online in fucking forever. Because I don't care to. But, like, even in those fucking red ranks, people just don't sidestep well. So it's like I never get the... I very rarely get the situation where, alright, I have to do this. And, you know, hold forward and delay my, my move a little bit, you know? I have to start using that against this opponent, you know? I never get in that situation. So it's like, you know... Hard to practice that mid match. Anyway, back three, back thrust, back three one, back three one back to go into a back step uh, K and K, back three one down to go into B O K. Bullshit things. All right, see, uh, back three one, this is negative eleven on block. Back three one down for B O K is negative eight on block. Sorry, back 3-1 is negative 7. Back 3-1 back is negative 11. But I have a feeling you won't reach with jabs. Oh, <laughs> okay. Guess you will. Two whiffed. That's interesting. Huh. Weird. I wonder if you could account for that and actually punish people, right? <laughs> he totally can. Ah, uh, can't do a. Uh... that bad. Now I'm going into KNK because I'm trying to block after that. That's annoying. <sighs> Jab string hold back, huh? Not a natural combo on normal hit. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I can't think of a <clears throat> neutral situation where this is worth doing, really. Like, there's no real special properties on a second hit. 
What is that doing? It knocks down. It spikes. So maybe... <clears throat> maybe at the end of a wall combo, you could use this. And then you could go into the stances to force mix-ups. Right? So like, because of that knockdown, it's going to spike them. They have to hold back. And because you could go into stance, you'll do shit like... And then they'll have to block that or duck. You could force stand stuff. Which also means you could do shit like... And then you probably already know that this is very dangerous at the wall. So that's how I would use that. I would probably not use it in a neutral situation at all. The frame data is not in your favor. So that's back 3-1. I don't know if I would call it a decent jungle ender either. Like, um, like, uh, man, it's fucking trash. It's too low damage. Uh, 15, 16. Eh, maybe the damage isn't that bad, but whatever. It might be all right to fit some. In the end of some mid-stage juggles, but if you were to do it after a long-ass juggle, right, it would uh, spike them really far away. So then it becomes a question of like, well, any of you should even reach the stand stuff. Anyway, next on the list is one of those bullshit power moves that strings that looks like it should be unsafe, but it is not unsafe. This is negative nine, and if you happen to counter hit. It does a fucking grip. It does um, 39 damage with a lot of range. Okay, so there's no counter hit confirm. But you could delay that shoulder quite a bit. So it's, there's a delay on top of the fact that it's safe, that shoulder. Negative 9. This is fucked up, and it wall splats, because of course it wall splats, right? And of course, it balcony breaks. So, whatever. Whether it's counter hit or not, this is plus five. Oh yeah, I forgot. So no tracking. Okay, no tracking. That's a common thing. There's not much tracking outside, but but Leo has tracking where it counts. This tracks to one side and that tracks to the other side. So there's tracking. Plus, like realigning isn't a hard thing to do. There's no tracking on these moves. So back four, one plus two. Don't got any tracking on it, but it's pretty fucking cheap. That does look like one of those kicks though that would lose to low profile stuff. Alright. Next on the list. Oh yeah, let me test one more thing. Nope, we'll sidestep in that. Right, just to be sure, let's test the bot. Right, I'm trying to put as much delay as I can to really see if they could, there's a gap there, but not not a big enough gap to uh, sidestep at least.
mon boss. Yeah, so no armor move. And that's safe too. Negative eight. I wish at least this was unsafe, but whatever. Pain in the ass. Next, back one four. Back plus one plus four, this is. Ah. So if you stand block, the low is going to hit you. 12 damage. Uh, plus three on hit. If you like walk into it for whatever reason, it's 22 damage, still plus three. Okay, so the low will clip you for sidestepping to your right, to Leo's left. <sighs> Plus one plus four. First hit only. So if the jab, if the high, the high hits you by itself, it's negative four. I saw this earlier. On hit and on counter hit. If the low hits you by itself, it's always plus three. So long as the low is connecting, it's plus three. And then if the low counter hits by itself, apparently it doesn't get that unique property like this does. Sorry, not that. That. So you go into back one, uh, back two, one plus two. Counter hit back plus one plus four, back two, one plus two. That's the, that's the one you want to do. 56 damage. Also the counter hit confirm. Of course, like I showed earlier, you could forward forward two, but that's actually quite difficult. See, that didn't even combo. That's quite difficult. You gotta put Stan into guard all. One more time. Hey, got it the second try. Look at that. Another wall splat. What am I looking for here? Back plus two plus three. These weird ass inputs. This is the unblocker, right? You can't cancel that. Whatever. It's an unblockable. Not much to say. Next, up forward one. One more damage than a regular jab. Uh, up forward one is... Wait, what? Hold on. No, that's damage. That's damage, right? Yeah, that's damage. Okay. 13 frames. I thought it was 8 frames. That's why I was like, what? Uh, 13 frame startup. Negative 1 on block. Much like a 2 jab. Plus 6 on hit. Up forward 1-1. One, one. 13 frame wall splat. High, high, natural combo. Causes a spin, so you can like do something like this, and they probably won't be able to sidestep it. Um, and that tail spins. Damage isn't great though. On counter hit, the second hit causes tail spin. Can delay it though. Oh, you can. Yeah, you can put enough delay to just a little delay. That's no delay. That's a little delay, and it, as you can see, it doesn't combo, which means it won't jail. Which means you could set up the counter hit with it. Okay, it doesn't jail. And then that's when the mid comes in, of course. That's when the mid comes in. Okay, so the mid is also a combo on a normal hit. That's not guaranteed. 
you could back roll that, right? Yep, you can back roll. And it's anything on counter here, right? Yeah. So the mid doesn't have any unique counter hit properties, but the high does. So the mid is just there to catch people ducking the high. Uh, up forward 1-1, one, one, the high high is negative 9, the mid is negative 14. Negative 14. So depending on who you're fighting against, this is launch punishment. Uh, Ryan, uh, Josie with me with meter with rage <laughs> will launch this. Alisa will sort of launch this. Whoever the fuck else has a 14 frame launcher will launch this. Can't remember everybody right now. Electrix will launch it. Okay, so that's a forward one. I think it's good range. Uh, it, and I guess this would be a 13 frame block punish too. I mean, the damage isn't great, but the knockdown is nice. A lot of pushback toward the wall, which is something that's a bonus for Leo, especially. Bonus for everybody, but especially Leo. What's just the tracking? Shaheen Rage Drive. Oh, yes, good call. Shaheen's Rage Drive launches and it's 14 frames. It is also hit confirmable. Those of you that didn't know that. Yeah, Shaheen's down back to one. It's a 14 frame punisher, the pa pa, the mid high. And the rage traps attached to down back two, so. Thank you, BG. Milo, yeah, that's only yeah, nah, it doesn't work. If you get anything guaranteed, oops, oh she has the charge built in. How'd I do that? Ah yes. If you want to be a real asshole and force a mix-up, <laughs> this is where this is that screen that does that. I always wonder what was the screen that does that. How was it? Match one plus two. Yeah, match one plus two. Or is it match one? Or you could hold it, right? Yeah, you can just hold it. Hold one plus two. And then you can go into a mix-up. You can force that low, of course. Or you can just do like whatever mid counter hit thing you want to do. I wouldn't recommend that's super high risk. I wouldn't recommend it, but you can totally do that. It's not like she's martial law. Where you got like a down 4-3 or whatever. Or down 3-4, whatever it is. I think it's down 3-4, right? The low hitting counter hit uh, jungle starter. That's very fast. Alright. Uh, next, we're looking at the tracking of up forward one. Not great. Uh, yeah, Kale. Yeah, I know. He has... Shaheen has the best Magic 4 in the game. And not just because of 4-1. 4-1 used to be even cheaper. That's crazy. 4-1 in 7.0? Well, jailed. Right? But then it became... Alright, we're gonna... And it, I, I think it was also like negative 3, whatever. Now, it's like it doesn't jail, but it's only negative 4. Right? You look at most uh, Magic 4s. You, you're in this situation when it's blocked. Negative seven, right? Shaheen's only a negative four. Now, Shaheen's movement isn't great up close because he's a big dude. But still, negative four is really good. You can still armor through a lot of slower shit, right? Other than jabs. So then you get the fact that if they duck the four one, you have four four, which of course they could just fuzzy, but still. If they do duck the four one, it recovers really fucking fast. So you're not going to get anything too crazy on him for ducking that shit, right? 4-4 four, four on normal hit guarantees a back 4 to send them back flipping away unless they get hit in max range. But the cool thing about when uh, when it's max range, the second hit, the 4-4, four, four, which is high mid, of course, is that it pushes back right, and it's spaced so well because his leg is so freaking long 
that despite the fact that it's negative 13, I think, or negative 12 on block, most people won't be able to punish it, right? So Shaheen's Magic 4 is really good. And then he has a task to it for 3, which the second kick is, I think, homing, but even if it isn't, it's a tailspin if it hits him out of the air. If the 4 happens to counter hit, it's an instant tailspin. And if they block the 4 and press something and get hit by the 3, which is a safe on block high, it tailspins instantly. Just like uh, this shit. You know? So all of his strings off of his 4 are really good. On top of the fact that he can easily, easier than most, convert off of a magic 4 by itself. Unless he's at like max range. Yeah, Shaheen's man. He needs that kind of shit though because he has no running move. He doesn't have anything that's running. It's plus on block. You try to do running three, you get forward forward three, which is uh, his highest damage juggle starter, but it's negative 12 on block. He doesn't have anything like a fucking slash kick, anything like a Kazumi running two, nothing. You have to play like keep out with him. For the whole match, you have to like use your movement to get yourself into position. You can't just easily close the distance with a wild running move. You have to like get yourself into position with your movement and then work in your four or whatever. <clears throat> so anyway, back to Leo. <coughs> That's up forward one. Next you got up forward two. Weird that unique up forward moves. Up forward one, up forward two. Oh yeah, up forward two is the bootleg ass sure you can, right? Up forward two by itself. Nothing guaranteed other than the built-in follow-up, right? That's guaranteed. So we go for up forward. That damage is shit. Oh, that's another one you can hold one plus two to supercharge off of. Right? Reset the mix up. Oh! <laughs> that that lunch is on counter hurt. Regardless of if they duck or not. Anyway, um, you definitely don't want that block though. With the supercharge on you. Um, this is a weird ass move. It's safe. If the second it hits by itself, it's plus. And on counter hit, it does that weird ass knockdown. As far as what you would get, I don't know. Maybe nothing unless the wall is nearby. Maybe at best a down four. I doubt that there's a pickup though. Here is double elbow. I always forget the info for it though. Whatever. Anyway. Alright, I'm gonna do a few more moves and I'm gonna call it because I'm starving. I wanna go eat dinner. It's getting cold. <sighs> so up forward to by itself is negative 14 on block. I mean, I guess you can always just do the the, the, the follow-up, but I think you can sidestep this. Huh, maybe not. So you can crowd stab and you'll always beat out. Ah, 12 frame exchange. But a jab loses. Uh, I 
mean, this is alright. How reliable is the low crush? Nope. Not a reliable low crush at all. And it's 18 frames. Yeah, I don't know about this move. I've seen it used, but... I don't know about this move. Hey, that's pretty good. Okay, so it's pretty good on that side. And what was the other thing that was good on that side? Down forward one. Okay. Man, I, th I feel like we need a mid for the left side. Don't have one, other than the homing mid. I suppose that's all you really need, right? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I suppose if you're gonna do it, always do the second hit. Be mindful that it could be interrupted. Which means it could be armored. You know? It could be parried or whatever. That is an elbow, right? No, it's a punch. So it could be countered, parried, whatever. Oh, there it goes. That's up for two one. It does track to the right, and it knocks down. The first hit knocks down regardless, right? And then that's the combo. I don't think there's anything better than that. Oh, who's hosting me? I can say. I can say. Thanks for the host. Too bad I'm about to stop soon. <laughs> but I appreciate it anyway. So down 4-2 is the follow-up. That damage is pretty shitty. For some reason, I remember this being better damage last time I in the older games. Maybe I'm thinking about Tag 2's crazy high damage, but... Uh, what's Leo's Rage Drive? What the fuck is that shit? What's going on? That's a pretty cool emo. <laughs> hype! <laughs> I still I appreciate it greatly. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm starving, man. I've been at this for like three hours now. Uh, Rage drives four forward two hold. Right? Is that combo for that? Doesn't look like you get that in time. But if that works there, hold on a second. What was it? Was this shit? That shit, right? Uh oh. Damn, it's just fucking hard. Uh, this doesn't seem worth it. 61 damage instead of what was it before? 45 or whatever, right? What's up, Unique Darkness? <laughs> All right, take it easy, man. Thanks for the host. Um, yeah, this is like you gotta think better than down four, down four two. Not even anything that ground spikes for a floor break, right? Nope, not in time. Down two, nope. That'll do. All right, so next on the list we got. Up forward three or up three, which is different than up forward three. So according to this, up three stand guard. Negative nine, regardless. Up three, well, they got the same properties. Twenty and twenty-one. The damage is different. 20 damage versus 21. So there's one more damage if you press up forward. And obviously, you cover more space, more distance. I don't know what it would use this for, though, honestly. Anything unique on counter hit? No. It walls, it's a safe mid low crushing wall spot, I guess. With some decent range. Yeah, I upload that stuff to YouTube, dude. This is like uh, about halfway through the cast? No, maybe more like a third of the way through the cast. Tracking. Nope. 
Nothing. Nothing. So yeah. I don't see much of a use for this fucking move. At the wall, I suppose. That's about it. And it's like no pushback, right? How about up three? Okay. You want to be cute with it? You got some pushback off of up three. Kind of like Dragonos up three. So that makes you wonder if you're near the wall, does it push you back? To cause like a whiff, you know? It is negative nine though, so. I don't know about that. Dragonos up four, three, and up three was a lot better on block. Like negative six or some shit. Well, I'm glad I could help, man. I had my friend help with that one, right? The Jin one. I didn't go through Jin's full move list quite like I did here. I just talked about various ways to use moves when my friend kept correcting me in chat. <laughs> but yeah, my friend may has been maining Jin since uh, DR, and he's always been better than me. So I went by his advice. Uh, back to the issue at hand. So yeah, up four three is kind of whatever. Up back four. Okay, defensive jump hop kick so it doesn't knock down a normal hit. Not on counter hit either. This is one of those round starter things or round enders that's relatively low risk. Because it's like, yeah, it's like negative 19, but you gotta chase it down. Yeah, you gotta chase it down. Like, you're not gonna get a launch unless you have a long range launcher. But it is negative 19. Next we got a 4-4 standard hot kick. Shit range though. But negative 13, uh, you guys know hot kick's pretty much universal. Negative 13 on block, outside of a couple of instances. Low crushes on the 8th frame. 8th frame, I believe. And uh, 15 frame startup. But this one actually has kind of shitty range. You know what I'm saying? You saw earlier, I blocked the down back four from max range and couldn't hop kick. And no tracking on hop kicks. Neutral jump hop kick knocks back, but no juggle. It would wall splat though. Up four. It's still negative 13. On counter hit, you got a full launch. Into whatever the fucking time was. That's not the combo. All right. Um, next we got up three four, up four three four. So I talked about this. this is mainly an Oki tool, and what's nice about it is on um, block it's plus one, negative one. Sorry. When you use this as Oki fairly often, if I'm not mistaken, you typically make this plus off of a knock knock situation. Like, um, how can I make it tech? Where's the tech? Well, how about, what was it before? Stand straight up and block? So the knockdown I did was, uh, what was it? Oh no, it was this. So see, I made it zero right there instead of plus one. There was another knockdown I saw early on, wasn't there? Fuck, what was it? 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 Not that. That knocks away. Oh, yeah. That's still a negative one. Okay. So, the key thing about this move, though, I talked about it earlier. If they stay down, you get a guaranteed, uh, whatchamacallit, down forward plus two plus three. Right? You get that animation, that means that little bounce, that means that's guaranteed, always, including for wall combos. So this is the last one, okay, this is the last one I'm going to go through the, uh, before I go eat and call it for the day. Oh, I'm starting to see that the Tekken bot has notes about tech jump. Tech jump on the sixth frame, on the fifth frame. Hmm. Wake up, second bot. 
eight frames. See, interesting. If you see on, if you see the second bar on the top middle, the last option says notes, and then you see eight for the hop kick. Anyway. Guaranteed. So, 16 plus 16. That's her, uh, her wall damage. After a wall splat. I don't know if there's anything better, because the old one was the fucking wall standing screen, right? What's the wall standing screen? Crouch jab into the wall standing screen. Standing one four one, or was it while standing three one two? Get the last hit. You could get that second hit to do it too, I think. damage versus uh, 45 plus 16 65 oh yeah it's way more damage holy shit so I was doing while standing 1 4 1 standing 3 1 2 Yeah, it's definitely not that one. Wow, the cross shadow doesn't work. It's a two jab. There you go. 61 damage. 61. You have to manually crouch and then two jab. And then do the string and delay the last hit. 61 damage versus this piss easy. What was that? Fucking 61 damage. 55. 55. 55. So it's 61 damage for both of them. Right? The other one was 61, right? Yeah, 61 damage for both of them. But the, the fucking one I just did was so much easier. Just up forward 3 plus 4 and then you mash top forward plus uh, plus 3 plus 2. And just to show you that that's guaranteed. I was able to block that. Fuck, how do you do the guaranteed shit? Yeah. 
It's a way to make that guarantee. Shit. You Leo players in the chat. When do you guys gotta know? Now, this is the highest damage one in this game. That's why I'm like, is it up? Well, I'm not the highest damage one, but it's an easy way to get good It's not off of this wall splat. What's up, Psycho? Yeah, I, I know that works too, but... It's 58 damage. You get more damage off of this stuff. Also, this is more damage. As long as you get the low wall hit. Fifty three damage versus fifty damage. How do you go into uh, instant while standing off? By the way, I no, I'm not crazy. I've seen this used even in tournament. There's a way to make that guaranteed off of a wall combo. But you can't instantly cancel out to get rid of the the course to the forward one, the cross dash one, that overlaps. I'm thinking there's a way to cancel that out. Find that out before I before I do a second part of this video. This uh, run through rather. Mid stage though. Mid stage, see, that's guaranteed. You gotta find a way to get that fucking bounce at the wall. And that's why this is a really good Oki tool. Yeah, even Aris has did it recently too. Yeah, I've seen it. It's like, because Juice Box, last time he was playing Tekken, I've been watching him learn Tekken. He hasn't been playing it in a while, but he switched back to KOF. But he was learning Leo, and he he figured out how to do the timing on this. And it seemed like it required either some sort of timing, or uh, strict timing, or it's off of certain, certain wall splats. Maybe I have to sidestep or something. There's some trick to it. There has to be. But I know for a fact that that is the fucking wall combo. And you can just see the damage, right? 
It's basically the same damage as the crouch two jab into while standing one for delayed one. All right. Well, anyway, that was the last move I wanted to look at for today. But one more time, I want to hit this. Get your ass up. There it is. <laughs> this is addicting. Oh, I gotta find this out one time before I stop for today, actually. Where's the reset? visually see the duck. This is hard. Ah, because of the wall. But that's a lot less damage. But the big damage. I want to see the big numbers. Damn it. I want to see the big numbers. <clears throat> Get it. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> it just whips sometimes, man. It's fucked. Damn it! I didn't delete the last hit. I did. I it too much. 76, though. can't really buffer it. It's hard. Very hard. It's like Brian's, uh, it's harder, but it's kind of like Brian's back four. It's a mock, a, a mock breaker. Whatever it's called. 442. I could probably re-splat too to get even more damage. That's the fucked up thing, right? This is like a just frame. Even though it's a 14 frame mid. <laughs> I 
she just whiffs. Vortex, I'm in it. Kinda hurts. I'm gonna keep going for a bit here, but I'm gonna cut edit it out here at the YouTube. <laughs> so just to say this for you people watching on the YouTube, all you all ten of you. <laughs> I'll continue with part two soon. Maybe on Thursday. Outside of that, next time I stream, it's gonna be near. And I'll finish Leo off, and then Paul is next. I'm gonna land this shit one fucking time. Maybe it's cause Leo's got the fucking arm out. Let me try this on a big character. I'm gonna cheat to get him. I'm gonna get it. I'm gonna get it for sure. I didn't, I didn't delay the last hit enough. 88 damage. 88 damage. Damn it, again! You know, I suspect all those times that it whiffed on Leo, it's because of the fucking stance, the left arm sticking out so much. Any other character that, has a, that doesn't have a stupid stance, it would have hit them. Still didn't get it. You see how consistently I'm getting it now, though? That was it. That was it. 93 damage. <laughs> 93 damage. It's good damage. And I bet you you could do more. I bet you. I bet you. I bet you. You could probably re splat because that's a hard wall splat. Re splat and then crouch jab while standing on for delayed one. As far as what you would re splat with, I have no fucking idea. Up forward two. Alright, what happens to you?
<sighs> Alright. I'm calling it there. Thanks for tuning in, people. You know how I do. It's going up on the YouTube later. If you scroll down, you'll check it out. Otherwise, I'll be doing near next time. Speaking of pictures of hot girls, you want to see that ass. That tubey ass that everyone obsesses over. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take it easy.